This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Casper Mattresses. Mmm, sleepy time. <laughs> Red hot comic book movie news. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet, The Weekly Planet. Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me as always... Is my co-host Nick Mason. Ah, oh, it's good to be here. Is it? Yes. Wait, what? I don't know. <laughs> it is. It is good to be here. You know it is. You're ceremonially removing your I've denim jacket re- with the Sherpa in the, well, in the middle. When I put on my podcasting voice, yeah. I suddenly feel like you know I'm doing work. You have many different <laughs> podcasting voices, though. You have this one that yeah. you're operating with now. Yep, yep. And you also have one, like if we do a promo, yes. it's more like... Hey! hey! I do have that one, yeah. yeah. I think I started doing... Uh, I did it ironically, but now I just do it. Yeah, same. Yeah. I did, well, not that specifically, but I... I started calling people bro ironically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's unironic. <laughs> hey, bro. I don't think you've ever called me bro. Do you not consider me your bro? Oh, you're more like my dad. <laughs> I'm younger than you. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> no, I get it. But, <laughs> but you're an old soul. I'm an old soul. And yeah. I look really old. Yes. Yeah. You've got an, you're an old soul with an old face, you know? <laughs> you, wait, wait, wait. You're an old soul with a face of an old soul of a shoe. <laughs> Just been trod on all day. Yeah, yeah okay. it's got that hole in it. Yeah. You know, water gets in. See the sock. You filled in. You filled it in with newspaper. It's still getting damp. Winter's coming. Look out. What are we? Ta- what is this podcast Good about? Good question. Well, we talk movies and comics and TV shows. I think I said that up top. Well, mm-hmm. we got a first bit of news here, and it's for Ruby Rose being cast as Batwoman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I first saw this, I presumed it was the movie. A movie, right? Same, but it's but a CW show, right? Yeah, it's going into the Arrowverse. Huh. It kind of surprised me that. Uh, I guess she's in that in between famousness. Oh, you're gonna say it's you're surprising she's she's stooped so low as well, to go to the TV. TV. I wouldn't say I wouldn't call it stooping. I just, <laughs> I she's they normally take kind of ge- more gen, uh, generic-ish people. More like uh, I I see what you're saying. I wouldn't yeah. say generic-ish. I yeah, know it's not it's not. But nice. I would say like more rising stars. Yeah, right. Like yeah. they'll get an unknown and they'll put them in the in the. They won't get somebody who, who's already yes. uh, who like our already Felicity famous. was it was an unknown. Yeah. Actress. Uh-huh. And now she's, you know, people bloody love it. They love Olicity or whatever the thing's going <laughs> yeah. on there, don't they? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But so, I think, I mean, this will get eyes on the series. I oh, guess. for sure. So yeah, so yeah. That makes sense. I mean, even if she drops out of it. Yeah. Even if she's like, actually not for me. When she might, because apparently, I think she she quit Twitter this week. There, Well, there was a lot of backlash, which was weird. I saw one tweet was like, another bloody <laughs> feminist person, you know, oh, yes, bloody yeah. lesbian being cast in... It's Batwoman. She's been a lesbian. What the fuck do you she's think? been a lesbian since her reintroduction in in you know ten years ago or whatever, or fifteen years. It's or something. bizarre to have mm. that react. Who do you want to be cast? Yeah, right. Well, uh-huh. I don't understand. What's the alternative? Just don't do it, Batman. Just, <laughs> just do Batman. A man as Batwoman. Okay, yeah, fair enough. When are we getting a a, ma- a Batman a Batwoman who's a man? It's you about know? time. Mm. You know what I mean? I think she'd be good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I. I didn't think I was really like a huge fan, but then I see her pop up in things. We oh. haven't seen the Meg. People will know that from the title. She's in the she's Meg, in sure. But she was, I liked her in that Triple X movie. Yeah, she was fun she, in that. She's in John Wick too. She's in John Wick she's too. in yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Australian. Australia's own. Australia's own. Yeah. So there Good you hair. Go. Great hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How does she do it? What's her secret? Is it an oil? What is it? I think it's a straightener. Uh, yeah, it's probably a straightened some, oil. I, it could be some oil also. I think there's an I don't oil. know. She's got versatile hair. I don't mm. yeah, I wish I had hair like that. Me too. Mm. What a life we'd live. <laughs> Maybe we'd be cast as Batwoman. It's very finally. B- I mean, about time. Yeah. Uh, speaking of DC, though, we'll move into the, the world of movie news. I'm ready. Don't mind, Mason. Okay. Uh, the b- finally. I, didn't, I was still getting a little sick of stooping to TV news, but all right. Here we go. The big legs. We're back the in. The big legs. Uh, the Birds of Prey movie that's going to be the Harley Quinn and everybody's in it. Uh-huh. I think this one might happen. You, 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 you gave a very... Uh, what's the word? I was going to say suspicious. It wasn't sus- it was skeptical. Cynical. It was skeptical, skeptical cynical certainly. Cynical, yeah. Look mm-hmm. when I said that. I think this one's going to happen. It was more that you were like indicating that this is this is the big leagues, and it doesn't <laughs> doesn't feel like the big leagues. Margot like Robbie movie. Yeah, all right. That's the big leagues. Mm-hmm. Uh, the villain's going to be Black Mask, apparently, which we haven't seen. Pretty good. We've seen a bit of. We've seen his dad in Gotham. Do you remember that? Right. Okay. He made everybody in an office shoot each other or something. Do you remember? No. The Sionis. Corporation? Huh, no, I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, some, in some weird cult or whatever. Okay. A weird cult where you make everyone shoot themselves. You know. Wait, in the TV show? Yeah, in the TV show. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. No, I missed that episode. Yeah. Slash season. 
Yes, bro, you probably did. Uh-huh. I think the first season. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so who who would be a good who do, who do you think would be a good cast? Who, who do you think would be a good casting for Black Mask? You, I think Statham would. be I was a good just going to say. I think maybe. I think that's head shape. It's head shape. Yeah, but I mean, his head might be too big for the mask. For the mask. Put the mask on. You top. need somebody with a very trim head. Yeah. Who's got that? He's, you need somebody with a matchstick. Yeah. Shaped and sized head. Toby Maguire. No, sorry. The other Spider Man. Oh, Topher Grace? No, the other Andrew Spider-Man. Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Now that head's way too big. What are you talking That's about? That's a monstrous That's head. all hair, mate. You've been you've been I've been tricked, yeah, all right. Mm. <laughs> he has yeah, a matchstick think... head. <laughs> mm. No, I don't know. What about a Luke Evans? Not old enough, I don't think. I think he needs experience. I think he needs well, to he's be under in... the mask, mate. Luke Evans must be forty. He'd have to be close if he's not. <laughs> okay. Give him, a, give him a chance, Mason. If you're listening, Luke Evans, and you're under 40, <laughs> and you're offended by this, email in. Let us know. <laughs> nah, he's got to be 40-something. Yeah, he'd have to be. Yeah, I don't know. I think Statham would be a good black mask. But this is a villain. We, we've seen him in video games a lot, and he's, he showed mm-hmm. up in Gotham, as we both know. Yes. We both saw that, where uh-huh. they made everyone shoot each other in office or whatever. Yeah, right, right. You right. That it was a good episode. But, <laughs> but I think this is a... You know, he's in the Arkham games or whatever. He's coming up. Mm, sure, for is, sure. Uh-huh. You know, we're not just getting another The Joker... Or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, for mm. sure. I mean, we're, we're, there's already two of them, so... At least. Not including the ones on TV mm. or whatever's going on there. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's good to have some fresh face. I'd like to see a a villain from maybe one of the Joel Schumacher movies. I'd love to see like a good Rework. Mr. Freeze. Si- same, exactly. Or a good Poison Ivy, yeah, yeah. even. Like We've that, got Bane. Yeah, We've seen Bane. Like that, Mr. F- like that, if you can imagine, like, Mr. Freeze sort of via, like, Mike Mignola, that kind of, like... Yeah. That kind of gothic-looking Mister Freeze Just did with the, the heart of ice. Story. Yeah, with the bloody mm. with the bloody riveted suit yes. and, the, and the big fishbowl like the Art helmet. Deco kind yes. of situation. Yes. Who do you put in the suit? Because Jason head, Statham. Yeah, but that, it's too big for a bowl. It would, yeah, it's true. You need. What do you need? What kind of head do you need for that? <laughs> you need, you need you, a dome shape. You need you need a, a man with a head the size of a small handful of popcorn. You know, <laughs> it's left at the bottom. It's an, some unpopped kernels. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because it's got to be amplified by the bowl, right? By the bowl, yeah. Mm. Okay, I get you. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to see a good version of Mr. Freeze. How about the Dean from Community? <laughs> yes, he's too funny. I don't think it would... I reckon he could... Do... He, he could definitely I've do I've never it, seen yeah. him do a dramatic role, but I think he probably has it in him. Is there a mean version of him, like an actor who's a mean... Oh, Like right. Moby? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> is Moby mean, the mean Dean? No, I think Moby is... Relatively nice, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I've not seen him in much. So yeah, yeah. Would mm. you see him in a fishbowl? Yeah, no, no. Okay, no, no. no. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. There's not that much movie stuff since the soundtrack to the beach. I'd imagine. <laughs> it's very true, <laughs> it's to my knowledge. Are you? Are you still? Do you still want more DC movie news? I hope so, Mason. All right, God, get gear, it over with. Gear up, rip mate. up, rip the bandaid off. Uh, Warner Brothers are apparently developing a Supergirl movie. Huh. She wasn't in that pod, apparently. On uh. Oh, well, she wasn't in the pod. Well, remember in Man was, of Steel. Man of Steel, there was a prequel comic. I think it, uh, that's obviously not canon, but it, it arrived, we've talked about this. It arrived thousands of years in the past and yes. the open pod that you see in Man of Steel was Supergirl. Supergirl, right. But yeah. now it isn't. No. But, but she's a, she still exists though. Well, none of the continuity in, in those movies count. <laughs> that's true, on yeah. Depending what it is. Uh-huh. So, yeah, great. Do I, we have any other plot details other than I that? I think that's I mean, pretty much it. Okay. Uh, they're, they're working towards it. Just a, just another one. Just throw yeah, it on throw the it on there. Why things. not? Yeah. This one I want to see, though, because I don't think this character... I mean, it's just doing well on TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. She <laughs> seems to be. I, I watched the but odd episode from, from yeah. now and then, and it seems pretty good. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But the, the movie is atrocious. I was going to say, what if it's a shot-for-shot shot remake of the one from the 80s? Do you need it shot-for-shot? Shot? Yes. Okay, then, yeah, that's yeah, wires and all. There's a lot, you see a lot of wires in that. Uh-huh. The entity fights a dragon and a sorceress, or maybe they're the same thing or something. Mm. I don't know. I don't really remember. I get that and how the duck. Yeah, confused. I don't remember. I, I think I had the, either myself or my sister had the read along book. Yeah, right. Of the, of the Supergirl movie, which I think came with a record. Oh, like so a, good. Yeah. What'd you do with the record? I don't know. <laughs> I've been cleaning out my old, my old childhood asked, bedroom. Yeah. yeah. When, and I've been digging out all sorts of. Just trash. Old, old, yeah, a lot of trash. <laughs> a lot of Transformers, a lot of Robocop trading cards. Did you, Are you finding that it's just stuff, as you've gotten older, piled on top of your younger stuff? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So you're absolutely, like, yeah. oh, it's, uh, you know what I mean, it's an FHM, because you used to read them. And then it's a <laughs> Mad Magazine. Yeah, for sure. And then it's your Transformers, uh-huh. or whatever. And then it's FHM again. What's going on there? <laughs> Time is cyclical. It sure is. What have you found? No, you've put a few uh, on Instagram. 
Yeah, I found like I found my I found all my tra- well I had a I had a shelf of all my good transformers. Yeah, yeah. So there's like your your op- several Optimus Primes. Yep. Uh, including Power Master Optimus Prime, obviously. That's a is that the newer one? No, that's an old one. Okay. Uh, Did you buy a newer newer I one? I have a masterpiece Optimus okay, Prime. They're different transformers. Yeah. Uh, I found an Ultra Magnus. Oh, so uh, my Megatron and my Galvatron, obviously. The ones together. that turn into a gun. Yeah. That's that's the original. The, the OG one. one that turns what's, into a gun. What's the what's the uh, what's the condition like? Good. I mean, not worth anything, obviously. Yeah. But pretty good. Yeah, but what about the toys? I'm talking about you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I don't think I tied that in enough for that No, to make no, sense. that worked. No, no, I get it. People, yeah. There was silence I was because just, you were stunned. I was stunned you made a joke. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what else did I have? I got uh, I got my, my Hot Rod and my Rodimus Prime, obviously, oh, yeah. they were there. None of these are boxed, I assume, either. No, why would they Because you weren't mean? one of those kids. Yeah. yeah. I was one of those kids initially who wouldn't even take the stickers off the sticker sheet oh, to put and them put on, them on yeah. the Transformers. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, Because they I... never look good eventually. They yeah, always right. come uh-huh. off. Yeah. yeah. Why do yeah. they do stickers? What is that? Is it like an know. Ikea thing? So you've got a sense of ownership? Yeah, maybe. I don't like that's, it. Yeah, Get that's it out true. of here. I don't uh-huh. like it. Yeah, yeah, so when a bully snaps it in half, you feel really bad about it. Oh, yeah. Were you one of those kids who took toys to school? No, never. There'd be like, I remember there was a kid who bought like a, what's the boom sound? We had like a working sound wave. And I'm like, if I had that, I would never bring it. Oh, I have. So, yeah, there was a sound wave as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And assorted tapes. And, that, and it works, right? I think it's an actual. Oh, no, the one, the original one is just tapes. It's just, got the it's guys just the transforming tapes. Yeah. But uh, the, I think there was a more recent one that actually is also an MP3 player. Right, right. I okay. think. Yeah. MP3 player. Remember yeah, those? Right. I vaguely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are days. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I also saw you, you had your you found your Robocop trading cards. I did, and my Batman Returns trading cards. There's very little foxing on those trading cards. Well, there's very little. There's neck, fox. Yeah. There's some foxing on the one where the guy drives his truck into the vat of toxic waste and he melts. There's some foxing on that one, but I think that adds to the authenticity of being melted by toxic waste. Definitely. So. Why would you put that on a kid's trading card? Because that's yeah. who's collecting it, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Unless they were your dads, were they? They were not my dads. And, and- <laughs> no. Anyway, good luck with Supergirl. Thank you. Who also, they... I had Cyclonus and Scourge. What are those guys again? Transformers the movie. They were the bad guys. Which one? In... Uh, they were the purple, the purple guy, and the blue guy. Okay, so so in the in the in the battle of Autobot City, a lot of the Decepticons are destroyed. Oh, and I'm then sorry. Unicron, and then you're not Unicron... talking about the new ones. No. The new movies. Okay. No, 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 no. I no. need to see these. Sorry. Okay, right. Cyclonus. Yes. And Scourge. They're a package deal. A package deal. A couple mm. of friends. Anyway, Unicron rebuilds a couple of the old Transformers into these guys. Oh, I know these guys. You know yeah. those guys. They're not, they're not in the new movies at all, are they? No. That's no. right. Do you remember who he builds them from? I want to say Skywarp and an Insecticon. You want to say that, but what are you going to say? That's what I'm actually going to say. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Anyway, if you want to... <laughs> If you want to see a, a, a middle-aged man slowly unraveling while looking at all his old childhood toys, just check out my Instagram. That's it. So they're on there. Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth, two of the best Chris's working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've apparently work, walked away from negotiate, negotiations for Star Trek IV. Uh, right. They've, they've locked in. They're locked into contracts. Uh-huh. Uh, they're owed a certain amount of money, apparently. Ooh. But because the last Must one, be bloody nice. That's what I'm saying. To not do anything and get paid for it. <laughs> So apparently, the because uh, the last one didn't do super well mm-hmm. financially, very well received, which is a shame. It's a good movie. Did we talk about how Simon Pegg wrote that? I had no idea. Yeah, yeah he did. Okay, right. Well, we I mean, probably mentioned it. Oh, we probably who knows? talked about it at length. Is it important whether nah. we whether we you know acknowledge what people did or didn't do? Nah. Yeah. Nah, stuff them. <laughs> but uh, no, I watched a... I watched a YouTube video where Simon Pegg breaks down his iconic roles. Oh, and one of, that was it. So yeah, that's one of those. Is it a good Scottish accent? According to him, because he, he talks about it in the video, according to his Scottish friends, it is. Yeah, okay. And like, apparently, like British people, like, that's no good, but his Scottish friends were like, no, it is good. Right. But then maybe they're playing a trick on him. They could be. But his wife is Scottish, and apparently she was. Oh, okay, well, then he's nailing it. But then maybe she's also playing a trick on him. Oh, my God. The goodness. Scottish love a good crack, you know what I mean? Isn't that an Irish thing? That's the Irish thing, yeah. <laughs> it's the Irish. I don't know what the Scottish like. Haggis. Yeah, they like Haggis, yeah. <laughs> They're like Haggis and Edinburgh Fringe Festival. They're like going up into the hills and there's fog. <laughs> Boy, do they, yes. <laughs> anyway, so this kind of leaves this movie in flux. They apparently weren't willing to take a pay cut. Okay. Uh, because they were like, look, listen, listen we're going to do this one a little bit cheaper. But so can you take less money? And they're like, well, no, because we're famous movie stars. Mm-hmm. That being said, I understand why they walked away because with these guys in it, I'd imagine... Yep. 
this one will probably do much a lot better, better yeah yeah oh. hmm. i think that's some that's some good uh because when i heard they were doing it i'm like that's a great idea who is they co- should make it i said yeah I make mean, a they movie were, yeah but... they were gonna make it <laughs> Then they had less money to make it. Yeah. Who who plays Kirk's dad in the first Star Trek reboot? The first Star Trek reboot. The first the first JJ Abrams Star Trek. Chris reboot. Hemsworth. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Okay. We have had this discussion, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. That's what and I thought. And we've done a commentary for that movie. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. So that's why he's coming back. That's what I thought. In- so this is the time travel one, yeah. or another time travel, or another one. time travel. There haven't been any new time travel ones, I think, of the new continuity, have there? No, except There's for been the f- people getting frozen. Yeah, but the first one was a whole time travel loop situation. Oh, yeah, of course. Yep. The entire movie was about we time We don't travel. remember these movies very well, do we? I was making fun of you for not remembering something, but I hadn't remembered something also, mm-hmm. and two. And yours is the most recent misremembering, so I'm the winner. <laughs> I guess so. Yep. Yeah. And I'm never going to make another mistake <laughs> again. Oh, man. <laughs> so. They're walking away. They're walking away for now. I'd, I'd imagine they'd be able to get them back. But maybe this is also, if they don't, maybe Star Trek is just going to move to TV. They can't recast. They can't recast Kirk is what you're saying. They can't recast either of them. I mean, if they bring back Kirk's dad and they're like, and it's, <laughs> I can't think of anybody. <laughs> Another Chris. Uh-huh. Chris Jim Slater. <laughs> nice. Yeah. From Cuffs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it's just going to all move to TV. Okay. Because maybe they don't want to roll the dice on it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But... No, I think this would be this would be a bloody great idea. And this was yeah, this was Chris Hemsworth like breakout role. I remember when I saw that in the movies because I'd sort of I was aware of him. Are we already for some twenty twenty hindsight here, where James p- predicts that he always he always saw something no, in Chris Hemsworth. I was surprised yes. how good he was in the opening uh-huh. and how effective that that first ten minutes of that film is. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't like you know, and then when he was like Thor or whatever, it, you know, it, yeah. it, it clearly solidified him as. A guy. Well, when I saw him in that role, yeah. I thought this guy's definitely going to be Thor, and I know he's going to be a big, big movie star. I know it, That's incredible. and he's going to be in a Ghostbusters remake. <laughs> Probably the best part of it. That's what I said. Is that what you I, said? Yeah, I said it. Wow. I said it. Yeah. Because we saw that movie together. I just don't remember you saying that. I said it to the guy on the other side. <laughs> okay, right. You were on the right. He was on the left. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Good, good. And that man was Christian Slater. <laughs> From Cuffs, you know. Yeah, from Cuffs. From Cuffs. I don't know Cuffs. I say I know Cuffs. What's Cuffs? It was a it was a movie. He was he was a cop in the in the eighties or something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Pre or post the one that Quentin Tarantino wrote. Pre. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Now the good thing about being Star Trek news is we've dodged the Star Trek. There's no Star Wars news this oh, week. Thank the Lord. There is. I tricked you. There oh is. come on. <laughs> I barely had time to do my, my, my weird spiel where I pretend like I'm so happy there's no Star Wars news. I know, And then sorry. I do a big song and dance about the how thing, yeah, there's yeah. no Star Wars news and I'm so happy about it. And then you spring it on me. You've still got this song and dance, don't you? I do, yeah. So. If anything, it's a fresher, newer song and dance that I'm enjoying even more. Uh, so there's a little bit of information about the John Favreau series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's apparently going to be a hundred million dollars for ten episodes or something like that. All right, that's some Game of Thrones numbers. I was right just going to say, how much is, does a Game of Thrones episode cost? Ten million dollars? I've already said that. All I've right, answered those questions uh-huh. already, Mason. Do they up. vary at all? Like, what if there's? Yeah, a- I'm sure they're like, we'll put a dragon in this one, yeah, and we won't yeah, put yeah. a dragon in that one. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, I think that, no, because we've talked about this, but the first season of Game of Thrones was. 10 million for the season. Yeah, right. And now it's it's getting out of hand, if mm. I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. But it all looks great. Uh, but apparently the rumor is that it's going to be focusing on the Mandalorians after Return of the Jedi. Oh. So what's happening there? Uh, have you been watching any of Clone Wars or Rebels and what's going on with the Mandalorians? No. They're a warrior culture. I know what they are. They were run by Darth Maul at one point. Oh. But if it's not really one because he's a clone and his dad's something Wait, else. Wait, so are they a, they're, a, they're a culture, not a race? I don't... Yeah, both. Okay, I just assume... They've got they their were, own planet. I assume they were like, just like generic humanoids. Like Han Solo's Carillion or whatever. Yeah, Corellian, right, okay. However uh-huh. you say it. Yeah, uh-huh. so like, they're human. But okay, right. They've got like different warring tribes and they paint each other different colours and they fly oh, they paint The warring tribes paint each other different colours. For the fight, yeah. Oh, that's fun. It's the pre-fight Sportsmanship, paint. Yeah, I like right. it. Okay. But uh, so I, this doesn't super interest me, to be honest. Just be on one planet and about... What if it's just people? jetpack fights all day? That's I've seen the Rocketeer. But there was only one <laughs> jetpack. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, that has to be a minimum of two jetpacks. And then I can get on board. They're short-range jetpacks as well. Oh, like are they? Because I've seen Rebels. They go a little bit further than you think. 
They've also got a missile on them. Yep. What a combination. Yeah, right. A missile and a jetpack. Yeah. That's not a good idea. No. Yeah. What if you fire the missile mm. and it doesn't detach? Yeah. And then you're flung along with the missile. And then it explodes and you explode. Mm-hmm, correct. There's no ejector seat on a jetpack. Yeah. So that's the traditional Mandalorian armor. So everybody has that suit. Yeah, that, like a variation on that. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, but does everybody all... have like the grappling hook and the flamethrowers uh, and the whatever? they different things. Okay, right. And they all... You know, there's different clans and their families and they betray each other. But, right. But mm-hmm. who's in charge and whatever. Yeah, huh. So I, who's it, in charge? You need some face painting to be done. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you, Sabine Wren from Rebels is a popular character that showed up. There's some... Uh, Katie Sackhoff, I think, played a Mandalorian in oh, Clone Wars. Oh, fun. And also Rebels. And, Starbuck. Yeah, that's right. So mm. actually, she'd be... Yeah, she could definitely show up. She's the right age. So I don't care about any of these people. Oh, are you saying that Katie Sackhoff could... No, she has voiced one. She's a character. She could be in live action in the TV show. Yes, that's what I'm saying, mm. yeah. I think it... I, I was gonna, I'm going to say Bo Katan, but I don't actually know that, but I'm going to look that up. Is it Chris Katan? Who's Chris Katan? You know, from Saturday Night Live. I do not know him. Oh, he's one of the Dancing Roxbury guys. Is that true? Yes. She's voiced by Katie Sackhoff. Wow. I'm well, a Star Wars legend, mate. Uh, yeah. I can't be stopped. <laughs> Did you think I could be stopped? You can definitely be stopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right, I can. Uh, do you have any interest in any of the culture and whatever and any of this stuff? Uh, started off with a bang. Started off with... A face paint and a jetpack fight? A face paint and a jetpack fight. Yes, yep. exactly. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Just give me one character that I can relate to and it's not just a Boba Fett copy. Yeah, right. Which is difficult because there's a lot of those <laughs> around. Sure. But And they all have the armor. Yeah. So, But I don't know. Just... I don't know. Yeah. I mean, again, any premise can work. Yeah. So. Oh, no, it, it definitely mm. hasn't got me going, oh, this is going to suck. This uh-huh. might not even be true. So yeah, right. We'll uh-huh. just see how that goes. Uh-huh. Do you like movies, Mason? Yes. Do you like the Simpsons movie? You seen it? I have seen it. Do you want a sequel? No. Well, they're making one. Oh, come on. Have you seen a Family Guy movie yet? No. Well, they're making one. I, I don't want that, though. <laughs> it's not up to you, is it? <laughs> no, it's not really. I guess it won't affect my life in any way. Imagine they you, I can imagine if you being the executive producer at Fox, they come in and pitch it. They're like, listen, we want to do a family guy movie. And you're like, I don't, I don't, I don't want, want that. that. <laughs> <laughs> but other people might want it. But yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I'm here though, you know? <laughs> come on, I'm tired. I don't want that. Yeah, come on, mate. <laughs> so, did you like the first Simpsons movie? Yeah, I did. Did you like it or was it just fine? It's when probably you, more fine. Were you annoyed that... That Albert Brooks's character wasn't just Hank Scorpio. Yes, yes. But the reason they didn't do that, we've talked about this, yeah. is because they thought it was too much of a deep cut. Come it doesn't on. matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. But also, no, it wasn't. Everybody <laughs> loves that episode. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter. As if the, probably Bumblebee Man was in that movie, right? <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. a deeper cut than that. There's not a whole. Maybe there is a whole episode devoted to Bumblebee Man. I bet there is. Yeah, I'm point. sure there is by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But yeah, so, so they're making a sequel to that. Yeah, wait, a direct sequel? No, it can't be a direct. Okay, but just I a, guess it would just go on from where just the, a movie the length. Is doing, okay, yeah. right. I I don't know if I'd go out and see it, but I'd eventually watch it because uh-huh. I, I don't watch The Simpsons. Presumably, you don't. No. I don't watch Family Guy. No. So make movies though, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. if you want to, and then yeah, great. Do you think there's going to be a, if the next Simpsons movie comes out? Do you think there's going to be like a mad rush for people to? Shotgun the last 15 years of Simpsons no. TV episodes. Did you shotgun the previous 10 years of Simpsons when the movie came out? No, but no. I mean, I was vaguely, I was, you know, pretty familiar with them. So no. Yeah, but you didn't want to get caught up on the lore of the no, Simpsons that's true. or anything yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, maybe the, uh, potentially this might be like, it's just a standalone Simpsons it story. Be, like yeah. continuity free kind yeah, yeah. of. I reckon, I, it's sol- I reckon it's a solid yeah, movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, from memory. From memory. Yeah. Uh-huh. Family what? Guy, do you reckon he'll fight the chicken? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, good. Yeah, it'll be like 20 minutes of him fighting the chicken. Okay, then. I get, you know what? If they went, okay, this is this is going to be the Simpsons movie. This is going to be our, like, this is going to be a song? masterpiece. Sorry. Okay, I was going to say Swan Song. Yeah, Swan Song. Yeah. <laughs> then we burn the Fox offices to the ground. Yeah. Um, What if they're just like, we go all out and we make it... Well, see, that's the thing, because if they're like, we'll make it back, like The Simpsons back in the old days. Well, that's what 2007 was. They got back a bunch of writers yeah, and right. stuff. Yeah. They'd have to admit that the last 10 years of Simpsons stuff has been They bad. didn't last time they did it. Yeah, that's true. Never admit anything. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Yeah. Never admit, never apologize, never explain. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of 
apologising and explaining. Oh, yes, I'm listening. Uh, Marvel is apparently more than interested, I'll just say more interested, actually, in getting James Gunn back into the fold uh, than looking at another director to take over the franchise. According to who? According to inside sources. There were multiple sources, some saying it was, some saying it wasn't, right? Great. So, oh, there's X-Men news as well. I've got to put that in. <laughs> I'll just do it off the top of my head because I can vaguely remember. Okay, great. Uh, but basically, uh, the room, this is all rumour. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disney want to say, you know, they've made a decision. They want to stand by that. Mm-hmm. But apparently Kevin Feige and the others at Marvel are like, you're making a mistake here. He's in, integral to the story uh-huh. and whatever. Uh, Dave Batista has been very vocal about wanting him back. To yeah, come back true, and yeah. saying it wouldn't be the same if they don't use his script. For the yeah, new one. he might walk or something. Well, or he's, and then he ended up saying he'll do what he's contractually obliged to do, which is smart. Yeah, right. Because right. I don't, I think Disney would just fire him. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, they don't, yeah. they don't flinch generally. No, that's true. So, who is the honcho? Who is the head honcho? Bob Iger. Right. Okay. Yeah, he's very savvy. Yeah, yeah. He'd kick the shit out of you. Oh, come on, nah. <laughs> so I get, you're, get, you're a measly Fox executive. I get some licks in. Don't even <laughs> worry about it. Yeah, so... How about this Bob Iger? I'll fight you in real life. And if I win, you bring James Gunn back. How's that sound? I think he's into it. Yeah. I'll give him a buzz. All right, I'll shoot great. him a text. If you could. I'll hopefully he'll get back to us before the end of the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's also rumours that Warner Brothers are interested in bringing him over for DC, which of course they are. Yep. I mean, I'd imagine they'd call him immediately. Yeah. Because he could probably fix a bunch of stuff over there. He probably had to field a lot of calls from them during Guardians of the Galaxy 2. No doubt, too. yeah. No doubt. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm directing this movie. No. Mm. Uh, also, it looks like they will be using a script for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which uh-huh. is probably a good idea. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because it's probably good. I would imagine so, yeah. So there you bloody yeah, go. Yeah. So that's where we're at. No mm-hmm. doubt we'll be back next week to say other things. Yeah. About <laughs> Maybe that. the news will be the same or different. It's very possible. Mm. Uh, in the world of X-Men, I'm ready. those movies that... Now, are now owned by Disney, but they're still going to be releasing. There was two rumors this week for okay, the X-Men I'm ready. reshoots. One of them was that X-Men... Dark, Dark Phoenix. Phoenix. I was going to say Apocalypse. <laughs> Dark. I was considering just seeing how long you, you sat there thinking and considering what it, which we X-Men movie we it was. We would have run out of tape. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> but, uh, the first rumor was that they're going back for three months of reshoots. Oh boy. Which is, that sounds like a whole that's movie. That's a whole movie. Mm. And then the second rumor that came out of Collider was, no, it's two weeks. Okay. So, I mean, you could take it as it needs to be... F- let's let's presume that both of these were true at one point. They were going to reshoot the whole thing. Yep. That's bad. Or maybe they just went, just reshoot what you had have to and let's just get it out. Yeah, that right. Oh, so yeah, I, so I don't think... Either way gonna, could be bad. It's not going to be good. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I think... It, what do you think? Well, I haven't liked some of the last few. Yeah. These ones in particular, though. Like yeah, this these type, ones. This no, this type, this, this, this particular flavor of X-Men, yeah. I do not care for. Yeah. Apocalypse, uh, no thank you. Yeah. Maybe they. Maybe there's some surprises in there. I don't know. Maybe a fresh coat of paint. Maybe there's some tweak that they can do. So they go to space. Yeah, nice. Well, we've had people email in who've seen an early cut and said uh-huh. it was pretty flat. So Great. But if that's early days, who knows? You know what they could put in? More what? goofs. Yeah, more goofs and gaffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm so excited for the Venom of the universe because it's already shaping up to fall on its fucking head. <laughs> here we go. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> no bias here, but here we go. <laughs> Venom uh, is going to be, it looks like, PG-13. Oh, that's right. I heard And the reason this. they're apparently doing this is because they're hoping to work it into the MCU down the line. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you want to open a film, don't you? Yep. You want to water it down in the vague hopes that your probably not great movie is going to be shoehorned into a better series of films that will in turn boost the revenue for future films. For future films, if this. they if, if they get made, which they probably won't, if this is a PG thirteen version of a character that people want to be really gory and yes. bloody, who then will not watch this movie. Correct. Wow. I feel like also. That you could make your, make your R-rated one and then you could use a slightly watered-down version when he fights Spider-Man, right? Yeah, for but sure. Maybe Absolutely. Dis- but I mean, maybe Marvel just don't want R-rated films in their universe. But then again, they've got... Deadpool? Or th- that, but um, the Netflix stuff. Yeah, for sure. Like Which is that real grisly. Has to be R-rated, right? A lot of people get their heads cracked in the corridors. Yeah, there's you know? a bunch of... There's abuse, there's, there's horrible stuff in those mm, shows. Yeah, and that's... they're boring. So it's like... <laughs> the greatest crime of all. <laughs> no, there's some good stuff in there. Yeah. But 
But I mean, you could just, you could even do it in story. You could have him be super violent in his own movie. Yes. But in when they introduce him in a Spider Man, he's got like a you know like some sort of shield issue shock collar on, and he can't kill anyone or something. Well, he you learns know? a lesson. He learns a lesson. Yeah. That's right. Uh, the other bit of news is remember that Silver Sable Black Cat movie they were Boy, making. Do I? Well, that's. I not... remember that day and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's not happening. Oh. And the reason it's not happening is because nobody knows who Silver Sable is. <laughs> well, that and they're splitting it into. She's from the nation of Simcaria. You know, I thought about this this week, and yes. I genuinely didn't know who she was. Uh huh. Like yeah. I definitely know who Black Cat is, but uh-huh. I do not know a lot about Silver Sable. She's uh, a mercenary. Or something? She's a mercenary. She had. She owns a mercenary company. Great. And she has silver hair and she always dresses entirely in silver. That's great. Garish, if you ask you me. Very tacky. A bit on the nose? Yeah, a little bit on the nose. Like a, like a, a bit s- bougie. Like a silk or like a metal? Uh, the, her like jumpsuit is metal and then sometimes it's a silk. That's What a delight. Mm-hmm, yeah. Anyway. If you've only got the one color to work with, you, it's textures. I guess is it issue. is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm-hmm, you've yeah. got to break that up somehow. That's true. Uh, anyway, this is going to be split into two movies. That's why. Oh, wow. <laughs> What a twist! <laughs> what a curveball! I thought you were going to say it, and, it's, and because they uh, they're cancelling it, and the screenwriters are being killed. But no, <laughs> they're hiring more screenwriters. Apparently, <laughs> great stuff. Yeah, this is this is insane. Yeah. So this whole cinematic universe is. I mean, it's not looking good. <laughs> but the thing is, though. Yes. If Venom's great, yep. All this is valid. That's true. If not, <laughs> bad. Can you launch a cinematic universe off an okay film? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. No is the answer. No but is I mean, the... I mean, I mean I, potentially, but Iron Man, you, I guess you could... Iron Man's not okay. No, it's Iron great. It's great. It's yeah. great, but I'm saying like, th- that's the, on- the only real example of a shared universe that works is the Marvel one, yes. which started out with a great first movie. And there's a couple of so-so yeah, definitely. secondary ones. Yeah, in the first, very early on as well. Yeah, yeah. But they got that first one right. Yeah. yeah. So I think the answer is no, you cannot build a universe on an average one. Well, that's too bad. Because mm-hmm. uh, who's going to come back for the second one? Not me. Yeah. I mean, look at the DC universe. It's diminishing returns. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cowboy Ninja Viking has been delayed, which means it's probably cancelled. Uh, I guess Wow, just tell it like it is, why don't you? What do you want me to say? <laughs> um, you want me to sugarcoat it for you? Yeah, it's gone to live on a farm Cowboy <laughs> Ninja Viking it's gone, it's gone to live on a farm Yeah With um, The Dark Universe <laughs> Yeah, the Dark Universe, sure Uh huh. Yeah. Great. I was trying to think of another multiple personality Oh, character. okay Look, there's no time to dwell on it now. Five Ghosts? They're yeah, making that? Five Ghosts. I think they're making that. Yeah, all right. Five Ghosts is great. Someone's got that. If you're listening and you've got Five Ghosts, do something with it. Yeah. Or if you're in your house and there's Five Ghosts. Do something with it. Yeah. <laughs> call Ghost Sitcom. Bu- call Ghostbusters Remake. <laughs> yeah, Get them right. to come in. Bring in Chris Hemsworth. He's probably the best part or whatever. Thank you. Uh, the Broccolis. Do you know who they are? The, the James Bond producers? James Bond family, yeah. Yes. They, they own all the rights. They're apparently looking to cast a black actor for the next Bond after Craig wraps up. Mm-hmm. People are then like, well, Idris Elba. That uh-huh. name keeps coming up. Uh-huh. But there's no confirmation of that by any stretch. Also, I feel he might be too old. We've talked about this before. Yep, uh-huh. And it's been a few years since we last talked about that. That being said, he looks great. So if they did cast him, I don't think it would really matter too much. But it's just how many action movies do you get out of a guy approaching 50? You know? That's true, exactly, yeah. And he's got to he... do... He's got to do stunts. He's got to punch through walls. That's he's right. got a bloody. Um, he's got to drink martinis. He's he got does to, have to. He's got to get whacked in the balls with a big <laughs> sack of lead shot or whatever happened in that in that movie. You know. <laughs> I remember that movie. Did you know there's already been a black James Bond? In James Bond Junior. No, in uh, in uh, the the. Oh, the David Niven one. No, I was going to say the. Um, Is it David Niven? Yes, it is David Newman yeah, yeah. in the original Casino Royale. But no, there was an audio book for one of the most recent uh, James Bond books, Trigger Mortis, and the voice of James Bond in that is David Oyelowo. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say, is it that guy? Yeah, and it is. It is that guy. That's yeah, great. totally. Yeah, yeah, from Selma and etc. Yeah, so he's, he'd be a good Bond. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's, if he's already done it, give it a give it a bloody bash. 
Yeah. He's also Agent Callus in Star Wars Rebels. He is. You familiar with that show? No. They'd have a lot of Mandalorians. I just guessed that. I just guessed some, you, you, some syllables That's there. amazing. Pretty good, right? Callus. Do you get it? Callus. He works for the Empire initially. Twist. Callus. Because oh, of his feet. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I get it. Does a lot of barefoot running. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's got big mutton chops. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more bit of news. The Oscar, uh, the Oscars are being talked about for some reason. And the reason. <laughs> End that, of news. <laughs> and the reason that, of that is. <laughs> Who knows why? It's a mystery. <laughs> one day it'll be solved, but not today. Good night, everyone. It's, it's rating poorly, apparently. Okay. It's, so it's going to do some. Because sh- it's five hours long? It's probably. five hours long. They're, they're shifting technical awards during the commercial breaks. So yep. if, if you've worked really hard on something, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't. And uh, they've introduced a new category, which is like a backhanded compliment. Oh, most best popular film? Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Great. That's like saying... Oh, best popular most podcast. In- yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. means nothing. Yeah. Do you know where that award is? It's in the cupboard. That's what I thought. I found- it was on the desk today and I'm like, this is taking up space. I, was- I looked around <laughs> as if... Like potentially using it to prop up your desk or something like that. <laughs> like you get a wonky table leg. And you're oh, like, yeah. oh, there's the award. All it's right. about that size where it could do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so this is, feels kind of like we can't give Star can't give Wars Black- or Marvel a, yeah, an Oscar. Yeah, we can't give Black Panther an Oscar for best film or whatever. Yeah, imagine that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not the best film of the year. No, but I mean, <laughs> but you know, potentially, you potentially it, yeah. one, like, you know, they could have, you know, in, in past years, people have been like, well, what about Logan? You know, that's a good Absolutely, solid film yeah. that could win. Best, but that shouldn't even win most popular, Logan. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It's basically, it's the popcorn movies. They may as well call it the MTV Award yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Best dude bro movie. That's right. Yeah, uh-huh. hottest kiss, best butt. You know all those <laughs> yeah, kind of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's the it's the Oscar statuette, but it's got a backwards baseball cap on. <laughs> so. Who cares about the Oscars, obviously? Well, exactly. I mean, these movies, the movies that we like, yeah. get acclaim in that we watch them and enjoy them and tell people about them and yes. talk about them at length. It doesn't matter if they get a statuette or not. And also, they make billions of dollars. Exactly. So, I mean, people always point to, like, Pulp Fiction wasn't uh-huh. nominated. The Dark Knight wasn't mm-hmm. nominated. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. People don't, Who won in 2008? Do you know? Probably Crash. <laughs> The one about racism. That was 2005. Who did win in 2008? Let's... Oh, 2000, oh 2008. Okay, let's... I want to look it up and see what happens. Well, Forrest Gump won, I think, the year that uh, Pulp Fiction... Mm. Which I kind of get. Like, I get... I understand why Forrest Gump would have won in 1994. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 2008, Best Picture... No Country for Old Men. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good movie. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's where, all right. I'll, all right, we retract every, our entire argument. Yeah. That's a great movie. That is a good I'm, movie. I'm gen- yeah. I, I am uh-huh. genuinely surprised. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. A lot of people are either No Country for Old Men people yeah. or um, There Will Be Blood people. Where do you stand? They're both good films, aren't Agreed, they? Agreed, but you have to pick one. I think I've only seen them once. Each. You have to pick one. Neither. Wow. <laughs> Even though you, you uh, have to pick one. Probably Will Be Blood. Huh. Yeah, what about you? The other one. Wow. That's right. Wait a minute. Yes. So, yes. we should do an episode on this. Okay, so The Artist won in 2011. Yep. That was, was that a silent film? It's like a black... Come on. That yeah, right. one, really? <laughs> because it was all about Hollywood loving Hollywood. It was, wasn't and That's it? what Hollywood's all about. An industry congratulating itself. Yeah. Should I go of one? I don't think so. The Hurt Locker? Probably not. Slumdog? Nah. nah. I love Danny Doyle, <laughs> Boy, but probably not. The Departed? Maybe. Why is Babel nominated? That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah, Crash won in 2005. So you're saying we should... Crash go- beat Brokeback Mountain. That's outrageous. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. That's one of those... Mo- that's one of those... Odd blips in in the entertainment industry where it's like it's a terrible, it's objectively a terrible movie, but somehow it got in there. <laughs> yeah, like I, I read an article recently about. Do you remember? Remember that Oasis album, "Be Here Now"? Yeah, it was. Vaguely. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't. What's the story? Morning Glory. It was the one after that. Right. And at the time, all the music magazines were like, "This is the best. Like, this is the greatest album. They've done it again." What year was this? Uh, is that 90, the second album. This is their. Third album, I okay, think. right, yeah, and this is the one, and like, and like, people camped out all night to to buy this album. It sold millions and millions of copies, and all the mags were like, "This is the greatest thing." This they've they've saved British music or whatever. Thank God. And then I read this article where so brave. all the all the reviewers who reviewed the the album back in the day. They talked about it again, and all of them were like, "In retrospect, that's that's the worst album ever made." <laughs> How do you 
you get that that wrong? I, it was a combination of factors. I'll find the, I'll find the article and I'll, I'll send it to you. Incredible. But it's, it's just a com. Like, I think because they were like... You caught up in the hype, man. Yeah, but caught up in the hype, but also like when... Uh, what's the story Morning Glory came out which is the, their big 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 one yeah. like where they broke big mm. I think a lot of those guys were like I don't see it I don't care about you know it's just it's yeah, fine right. whatever and then like six months later everybody in the world knew all the lyrics to all the songs yeah. and I think they didn't want to be wrong again right, so they right. were just like they've done it again how is that possible it's, you know kind of thing right we should do an Oscars episode I, I think you were going to say just we're, well let's do an episode on the Oscars 2008 <laughs> just Okay, Titanic beat LA Confidential. That's probably fair, because in terms of scope... Yeah, for sure. The English patient should not have beaten Fargo. No. That's ridiculous. Yeah, uh-huh. Or Secrets and Lies. I don't know what that is. No, absolutely. Have you ever heard but, of that? But I mean, Far- Fargo is like... It's a way better film, but it's genre. Like, it's crime genre. Yeah. And that and that and that is not... That's never beaten by, like... I'm amazed British, that got nominated. British Merchant yeah. Ivory. <laughs> yeah, right. la da You know? Yeah. That's always going to win. Also, in 95, Babe should have beaten Braveheart. Don't at me. <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> we'll wow, do... mastermind George Miller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't direct it, though. Oh. Never seen the sequel. Apparently, it's not that... Apparently, it's really good. Big in the City. Babe 2. Big in the City. Big in the City. Big in the Mr. City. Mr. Big from Sex in the City. He's in, in the, the City. city. Yep. Has he ever not been? Probably not. Oh, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mason, it's time for an ad. Oh. Now, podcast listeners of this show, they're invited to say goodbye to summer. Unless you're in... And hello to savings. Is that where we're going with this? We could say that. I improvised there. That's great. I don't think it's wrong, (laughs) but it's definitely not what they're looking for. Let's say it is. All right. (laughs) So with Casper, we're talking Casper mattresses. Mm, You can take advantage... Sleepy time. That's right. You can take advantage of Casper's limited time Labor Day offer. Oh, and hello to savings. That's what I'm saying. That's what you're saying. Yes, I mean, right? Yeah. Casper's expert te- team of engineers and des- uh, designers research, prototype, and test their mattresses to meet the needs of all kinds of sleepers and provide that just right balance of comfort and support. Mm. All Casper mattresses use premium foams that relieve pressure and align your body so you so you can fall uh, asleep easily and wake up feeling refreshed. Now, Mason, as a man who has a Casper mattress, mm-hmm. you being so... What are some of the benefits? Would you say it's a good sleep? Would you yes. say it's an unboxing experience? Yes. Would you say you feel a close and personal bond to your mattress? Yes. <laughs> that one was less enthusiastic. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that one specifically? Um, no. Okay. No. <laughs> Fair enough. So I think the, po- the close personal bond between a man and his mattress is a private affair. That's so. true. Mm. It is personal. Yeah. But the unboxing experience that you would say Super fun. you would enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like an unbo- unboxing of anything. Yeah. But if you unbox a thing that is clearly too big for the box itself, yeah. Tata style, that's How does very it even impressive. Work? Don't know. Because you can know you can never undo it as well. <laughs> and that's great. Yes. Because why would you? Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the thing though, Mason. I'm ready. For a limited time, visit casper.com slash savings and get 10% off any order with a mattress. This special off off this special offer expires September third, twenty eighteen. So act now. Terms and conditions apply. It says repeat above offer. URL and expiration date. Do you mind if I just do that? No, you should do that. It's part of the part of the ad. So don't just say that thing you said, but actually actually do it. Follow the instructions. Right, I can do yeah. this mm-hmm. for a limited time. Visit casper.com slash savings and get ten percent off any order with a mattress. This special offer expires September third, twenty eighteen. So act now. Terms and conditions they do apply. Labor Day, more like Sleepy Night. <laughs> That's good. You're pretty good, right? They can have that for free. <laughs> now, unfortunately for us, Mason, I haven't read a lot of reviews for the Meg because I want to go in fresh. I want to go in clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so fresh and so clean. You want to go in outcast style. That's right. Mm-hmm. I do. Uh, I couldn't make it to the screening. Mm-hmm. And you also couldn't make it to a screening, so we haven't seen the Meg. Mm-hmm. But... The good news is that Jason Statham has made a bunch of movies that we can make fun of. <laughs> Terrific. In this episode. Not just The Meg. No, not just The Meg. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been active for quite a while now, upwards of no, 15 years. Do you mean sexually? 20. Maybe. <laughs> good for him. 20 years. Yeah, wow. That's pretty good. That's good stuff. We've done episodes like this before. I think we've done one on Keanu Reeves movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We went through his entire filmography of the ones that we remembered and we talked about them. We gave him a Kia yes or, or a Kia no. And that rating, I feel, should apply to all... I agree. All film yep. stars. I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good, yep. excellent. It's good because also we'd have to come up with a Statham-related rating system and I refuse. Statham or Statham? 
Clam. They, they, they both nah, sound bad. Work. Yeah. Tell you what, if midway through the episode we think of one, yeah. we'll just abrupt left turn and we'll start giving them that Very rating. Good. But until then, Kia yes, Kia no. Yeah, I agree. Because I was so happy with that at the time. Mm-hmm. Why would we change it? Yeah. You know, so he's, he started when he grew up, a little bit of background on the state. Mm-hmm. He uh, it was, did a little bit of martial arts growing up. Mm-hmm. He was also friends with Vinnie Jones growing up. Huh. That's nuts, That makes right? sense. Yeah. They look like they're the friend, same friends or something. Yeah. Or they also look like if you got Vinnie Jones mm. and you're like, t- like screwed him open in the middle and you took his top off, <laughs> like you took the top half of his body off. Jason Statham would be inside him, right? That's right. Yeah. Have you heard like those Russian dolls? You know our friend Hollywood Pete? Yes. Have you heard his Jason Statham story? I don't think so. Okay, so it's not that big a deal. But his wife loves Jason Statham, uh-huh. right? And he had an opportunity. He had a dinner with Jason Statham. And she was like, oh, absolutely. I would 100% love to meet Jason Statham. And she's quite tall. She's like 5'11". Uh-huh. And she was so disappointed when he showed up because he's like five six, five seven. Oh, right, she's like, uh-huh. oh no. But he's five six tall and five six wide. Exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So good on him. There's more of that story, but I'll Oh <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not nothing bad. Oh. I just feel like I'm not gonna, oh. I'm not gonna right. share it. It was it was apparently a very nice big headed boy. Oh yes. Uh so he's 51 years old uh, roughly now, but he started also as an Olympic diver in the early 90s. He hasn't always been 51 years old. That's true. He mm. worked up to it. Yeah, because Vinnie Jones was a soccer player, right? That's right, yeah. The great game. And he did, he did a bit Association of... Association s- football. That's right. Mm. He did a bit of soccer as well. Vinnie Jones got him into that, or football. as you Association football. Association football. Uh, he was also a model in the 90s. Makes sense. Rough around the edges. Was he also model. in the band Right Said Fred? <laughs> I don't think so. Because he looks like he'd fit right in in the band Right Said Fred. Right Said Fred. Jason Statham. Statham. Doesn't autocorrect. Huh, yeah, so it's pr- almost certainly accurate, right? Watch Half Jake Naked Jason Statham in the most 90s. He might be in a music video for them. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I only said wait, that because the guys wait. in Right Said Fred are buff and bald. <laughs> oh man, what a revelation if that turns out to be the case. Sometime after leaving Britain's national diving squad and before Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels, this is from Uprox, the state got a greasy money, got his greasy money maker for Scottish electronic band The Shaman, Shaman in Coming On music video. In the, in the alternate universe, Statham is one of the guys in Right Said Fred. Oh, it's not that. No, that's, that's a shame. bitterly disappointing. Isn't it though? That's very misleading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's a model, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Does his little turn on the catwalk. I'm familiar with on the song. On the catwalk. He's also been... On a, the catwalk. On the catwalk, yeah. Shakes his little tush on the catwalk. He does. His yeah. tiny little buttocks. <laughs> but, uh, so, look, the thing about Statham is he's been around for a long time. I've always kind of liked him. When I first saw him in... The first one I saw him in was Lockstock, mm-hmm. but he, he, he's done a couple here. He's done The sh- the Shaman, the video we actually oh, just yes, talked yeah. about. Mm-hmm. Eurasia, Run to the Sun. I'm not familiar with that one. I am. Uh-huh. And then the next one in 1998 is Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels because he got introduced to uh, Guy, Guy Ritchie, Ritchie. Mm. and that he needed a tough, cool street guy. Yeah, and right. At the uh-huh. end, did they get away with it or didn't they? Just like every Guy Ritchie movie. Yeah. Did they or didn't they, Mason? Are they... Something about the guns on the bridge? Yeah, no, they they didn't get away with it. I or think. did they? No, I think they didn't get away with it. Because the phone was ringing and he was choosing between answering the phone or dropping the guns, remember? Yeah, but I think he didn't. But did he? Did they get away with it? Or no, they didn't, didn't they? get away with it. There was also a TV series. and at the Lock end Stock, of, yeah, it's called Lockstock, I remember yeah, that. And at, every, every, at, at the end of every episode, they either did or didn't get away with it. <laughs> what I actually, when I was over at my parents' house clearing out old stuff... I did find my old lock stock DVDs. Oh, and? Oh, it was a whole bunch of Statham. So I haven't watched them because I don't have a DVD player. Statham's currently. not in that, is he? No, he's not in the. Yeah. He's in Snatch, but he's not in. Yeah. But he's not in the lock stock. In lock, the lock stock TV series is like four character arch- character archetypes who are very similar to the ones in the movie. Yes. Except different names. That's right. Uh huh. Great stuff, probably. Yep. I thought it was kind of fun. I bet they, it hasn't aged well. I bet it hasn't. They nearly got away with it, didn't they? Or did they? They didn't get away <laughs> okay, with it. Good, I want to be clear. They did, didn't get away with it. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lockstock's good from memory. Absolutely it is. Yeah. I think it's... I think Guy Ritchie got caught in that for quite oh, a long that, time. In that stylistic... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... It kind of carries over to like even Revolver, which is more recent, which is apparently not so good. Have you seen uh-huh. Revolver? Ah uh, no, and he's just because kind of... I'm, I've been told multiple times it's completely nonsensical. Yeah right. The okay. plot. Yeah yeah. What do you think of Snatch though? I mean, whatever we're talking about. Lockstock. Lockstock. We're still on Lockstock. Anything in, anything in particular? 
it was something I hadn't seen before at that time. Same, like it was yeah. totally fresh and original. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's like maybe it's like Tarantino, where the first time I watched, it, I'm like, oh, I'm blown away by this. But then it turns out it's actually just a pastiche of old movies from the '70s and, and yeah, right. kung fu and etc. But again, with with Guy Ritchie's Lockstock, I'm like, oh, this is. I've not seen this. This and feels a dog race or something in it, isn't it? That snatch. I don't even know. Oh my <laughs> god. Lockstock has Sting in it. Snatch has a dog race. What's Sting? The the musician Sting. Oh, it does too. He runs the bar. He's the bartender. Yes. Which one is Cat from Red Dwarf in? Is it the first one? He's in the he? first one. Yeah, cool. Yes. He Did they get away with fire. it? They didn't get away with it. <laughs> I mean, it's ambiguous, but it's no it fun. It is ambiguous. If, it's no fun if they got away with it, I feel. Well, that's why it's ambiguous. Yeah, all right. You can't say it's ambiguous and they didn't get away with it. No, I think they didn't get away with it. I though. think you're wrong. Right. I think it's ambiguous. We should tweet at Guy Ritchie, if indeed he has Twitter, and ask him whether they get away with it, got away with it. And then once he's sifted through the thousand tweets he gets a day asking whether they got away with it <laughs> in any given any one given any one of his given movies he'll get to us and he'll tell us definitively there we one go. would hope we got to burn through these though uh, okay is that a big key yes from it's you it's a big key yes yeah, definitely i i uh-huh. actually that's a 20 year old movie now i'd very much like to revisit it mm-hmm. Vinnie jones is the biggest face on that poster as well and that's incredible yeah right uh the next jason statham movie is snatch yes uh so in in lockstock is a character called bacon in Snatch is a character called Turkish. Turkish, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. I don't really remember this one super well, but I don't also remember the other one super well. <laughs> Did they get away with it? Who's to say? It's ambiguous. But Brad Pitt has abs and he's a nonsensical accent and he gets in a fight and he's a <laughs> gypsy. Uh-huh. And Jason says, was like, oh, I it. And then a whole bunch of stuff happens, uh-huh. probably. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they either do or don't get away with it. They didn't get away with it. <laughs> it's ambiguous. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's less ambiguous. Uh... Yeah, but what I think is interesting about the, his first couple of appearances on uh, in the silver screen is that he's not a rampaging, indestructible monster. No, he's not. At the, some point, there was a turn, and they went, you know what people would like to see him as? A guy yeah. who cannot be stopped by any means. Maybe we because, can find that. Yeah, let's find it, because yeah. uh, because I think it's coming up fairly soon. I don't think he has that yeah. many more roles where he's <laughs> no. not. But like the Lockstock and... Lockstock, he's pretty much just a regular guy. Yes. Snatch is a it's more cartoony, but he's also he's a guy who spent with with Tommy his his pal. Yeah, they spend most of that movie on the run, kind of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Bigger, more threatening guys, and he's not super ripped or anything in yeah, it. Huh. Or, yeah, 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 or anything. Like yeah, that. but yeah. at a certain point, they're just like, he, look, he's done a lot of he's done a lot of great great stuff for bald men. I feel definitely. You know, yeah. If you if you know a, if you know a friend who's very thinning on top. Or he's like bald on top, and he's got like the the mullet out the back or whatever. If you want, if you want them to change their look, yeah, you just go up to him and be like, "No, nah, man, shave your head. You'll look like Jason Statham." You look like Jason and do Statham. It. That's right. They'll do it. Yeah, okay. and, and you could live inside Vinnie Jones. Live inside Vinnie Jones. Hasn't that always been your dream? I, yeah. I don't remember Snatch being great though. Uh, it's not as good as Lockstock, right? No, I think, and it's it's more it's more stylized, and it's more yeah, right. Cartoony. It's more a caricature, I think. Okay. It's less. It doesn't feel like like I feel like Lockstock, even though it has these stylized elements and like the, you know odd cutaways and like some like like cartoony transitions and mm. stuff like that. I feel like it feels much more like it, it, a story that could happen. Yeah, right. And I think Snatch is way more like. Uh, I don't know it's way it's way more Hollywood certainly. Do you think Guy Ritchie and Madonna ruined each other's careers? Um, <laughs> no, I look, I think Madonna, I mean, what's, I, <laughs> why are we talking about this? I, I don't know. Like, I think Madonna had a mat, like Madonna's career went for like 40 years or yeah, something like that. Yeah. And it's not like, like either of them stopped. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think Madonna's creative output just sort of thinned out over the years yeah, right. and then she just sort of slowed down. I think, I think if she wants to make another album, she would, but I'm, you know, yeah. And but maybe she killed Guy Ritchie's. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, right. The next one after that is the 2000 movie Turn It Up, where he plays Mr. B. Didn't see it. <laughs> that is. But let's assume... Oh, wait. Uh, Snatch, Ki, yes. Ki, yes. Yeah, I'll have to give it a Ki, yes. Let's yeah. assume this is the one... This is the movie where he becomes an indestructible, rampaging monster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, we've got Ghost of Mars, where he plays Sergeant Jericho Butler. <laughs> I've never seen Ghost of Mars. Are you familiar with it? 
Have I seen Ghosts of Mars? I have seen a Mars movie of that era. Now, are they actually ghosts? Because oh, it's the Ice Cube one, yeah. Are they actually ghosts? Because looking at uh, this, it looks like they're maybe aliens. Or are they ghosts of aliens of Mars? Is that what they're saying? In retrospect, I have not seen this movie. <laughs> but I did. So there was. I think this was the era where there was another Mars movie that came out at the same time. Uh, the what... Red, Red yes, Planet. Yes, I saw that And the one. other one, yeah. Mission to Mars. There Mission to Mars. I saw Mission to Mars. I remember, I remember seeing the ad uh-huh. for Ghosts of Mars and thinking, maybe. Good. But I, but I never did. Wow. Oh, no. If I close the IMDb of Jason State. And I you know what? Have. They put that in the... They, they overheard you, the movie executives, and that got put in the, in the next ad for Ghosts of Mars. <laughs> it was like, see Ghosts of Mars. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. James. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm going to open up his bloody IMDb. Jason Statham, you son of a bitch. Oh, the next one's The One anyway with Jet Li. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Jet Li's, uh, there's multiple versions of Jet Li killing each other through dimensions. He plays his partner or something and maybe he betrayed him at one point. Who knows? And then they kick each other in a steel mill. (laughs) Uh, This is the one I remember noticing that he could do kung fu and whatnot and karate. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, Do you remember it being any good though? I remember being impressed that the two Jet Li's didn't look terrible. Okay, but were you impressed with Jason Statham? I don't remember that much of him in this movie. Terrific. Yeah, I remember he's got more hair than... Well, this isn't about the Jet Li movie, The One. The effects heavy Jet Li movie, The One, where there's a multiverse, but there's only like 32 universes in it, in the multiverse or something. I'm not sure of the specifics. Uh There isn't enough. (laughs) There should either be two parallel universes or an infinite number of parallel universes. Don't give me a strictly defined smallish number. They actually said 32? Something like that. Look it up. He only killed that many. I'll look it up. Because I thought he'd be doing it for like... A thousand years. Yeah, or something. I think it's... Maybe it's like 200 universes. For those people who don't know, in the one, uh, there's, there's, there's 32 parallel dimensions. And if you go and murder the Your other versions self. of yourself, you, you gain their powers. Yeah. And eventually there's two Jet Lees left. And one of them wants to be the one. At which point they they're, they're they're so powerful they can pick up a motorcycle and hit the other guy. Oh with it. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and that's a good effect probably for the time. There's 125 universes. Jesus, that's too many. No, it's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough because it suggests that if you got if you multiplied your personal strength by 125, yes, you yes. could rule the universe. You couldn't. You're still not bulletproof. <laughs> You know what I mean? You pick up a motorbike. Yeah, because that's true. But if there, if he'd been doing it for tens of thousands of years and there was millions of them, but I'd be like, well, that makes sense. But how would he, though? Because then he'd age. Yeah, but I'm saying dimensional powers or something. You are saying that, aren't you? Yeah, I'm saying dimensional powers. He ends up anyway, in- this isn't a podcast about the 2001 <laughs> Jet Li movie, The One, it's directed about- by James Wong. Isn't Produced it? by Steve Chasman, Glenn Morgan, Charles Newworth, James Wong, Todd Garner, Lata Ryan, Tom Sherak, Greg, Greg Silverman, and Happy Walters. It's then, not about then that. what are we even doing here? Thank you. Uh, Keanu. Yeah, yes. Wow. Because it's just the right amount of universes. No, I disagree. <laughs> I think it's because you said 32 initially, so I'm like, 125 is not bad. That's not bad. It's yeah. better than 32. Also in 2001, there was the movie Mean Machine. Which is a oh, remake yeah. of the football, the Burt Reynolds one from the 70s. Yeah. Vinnie Jones is also in this movie, He's right? in that one as well. Yeah, oh. where they play soccer in a... Uh, or football. Association football. In a, <laughs> in That's a, why it's called... Look, it doesn't matter. That's why it's called soccer. <laughs> yes, all right? yes. And it, they play it in a, in a prison yard against guards. And Vinnie Jones, you think he's going to bloody take a dive. This mm. isn't a Jason Statham movie either. <laughs> no, I was going <laughs> to say. He, but he's in it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it was good from memory. Oh. I saw it in like 2003, uh-huh. and it was fine. I, I mostly don't it. care for uh, for uh, football movies, so I'm going to give it a Kia no. I'm going to give it a big old Kia yes. Wow. Okay, this is where things really heat up, Mason. Yeah, here we go. 2002 introduced us to Frank Martin. The Transporter, the transporter himself. Transporter himself. What got me jazzed, Mason, excited yes. for the movie The Transporter? There's all the stuff happening in the trailers that it's was not, not in the, in the movie, yeah. Specifically, we've talked about this, where he deflects a rocket launch, a rocket with a serving tray. Yep, in his house. In his house. Yeah. How does he do it? 
Who knows? Who knows? But he does. Yeah. But then they took it out. It's also got that great bit where you hear the doorbell ring and they look through the peephole. <laughs> and that's you right. just see him sprinting towards it. Yeah, and then, and then he kicks he the door down. The door open. That's so good. I'm glad they kept that in. <laughs> if you listen to the audio commentary of the DVD for that movie, there is a bit in the there's a bit in during that the the, the attack on his house. Yeah. And there's and Jason Statham's doing the thing and he's like yeah, there there was a bit of a piece where I deflected the thing with the serving tray, but they thought they thought I better take it out, and I'm like, yeah, you, you get it, Dave. Who directed the transporter? What French director? Luc uh, Louis Louis Letier. Oh, it's and not Luc Corey Besson. Ewan. All right, uh, he wrote it. Okay, but uh, or he co-wrote it. So there you go. I would I don't know whether it holds up or not. I would <laughs> I would say probably not. But I reckon it probably holds up better than the the succeeding. Yeah, definitely. Movies. It's definitely the best of the. Four because mm, <laughs> yes. there's four now, but no, I I would say it, I wouldn't mind revisiting it. I don't know whether I ever will, but I wouldn't mind it. There's not enough time. No, it definitely isn't. Uh, big key R yes from me for big that key one, R, yes especially also. for the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Red Faction Two. He voiced the video game. Who cares? <laughs> uh, is that the open? No, that's not the open world one. Uh, the Italian job was after that. He was handsome Rob. I fucking hate that movie. <laughs> Is it because you like the original? I so really much? like the original, and I just don't think it's very good. But I feel like this was there's some Fast and Furious pioneer shit in this movie. In hindsight, give me an example. Like there's a ridiculous heist where they blow up the road and they drop a billboard and the truck goes under the thing and then they yeah, have right. to do a race. Uh-huh. There's the first Fast and Furious is mostly just stealing DVDs and and, and yeah, that's true. And yeah, whatever. I don't really remember. But the Italian job feels more like a Fast and Furious movie than the first Fast and Furious movie. Yeah, right. Which is weird because now he's in the Fast and Furious. But he's just in the ensemble. Like, looking at the poster, it's Charlie's Theron. It's got Seth Green. Yeah, it does. And uh, Mark Wahlberg. And his arms are too big. They they teamed up again. They in? Bloody, what's um, Charlie's Theron and... uh... And Statham. What else have they been in? Fast and the Furious. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's right. Whichever one. Eight. Yeah. Eight. He's like the fifth biggest guy on the poster. Yeah, right. Um, Wahlberg. Yeah. Others. Seth Green. Others. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking that even... Because Donald Sutherland plays the dad of Charlie's Theron, and yeah, right. if someone gets betrayed... Mark, oh, that's right. Bloody... Mike Wahlberg? No, Edward Norton's in it. Yeah, Edward right. Norton is in it. But uh, I'm, I remember thinking, like, you should have got Kane. You should have just made it a sequel. But whatever. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's probably better than I remember it. Or worse. For a second there, I thought you meant Kane, the WWE wrestler. Please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I remember... He's a mayor now. He's the mayor of a town in... Look, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he deserves it. Okay, <laughs> great. He's worked hard, I okay, guess. Great. I don't know much about him. But um, I remember being not impressed by the new Mini. I think they're stupid. <laughs> what you... They're just the same, so- they're so- the same size as a regular car. Yeah, that's There's what no- I mean. What's not... the- where's the fun? Have they got a little bit of zip in them? A small amount of zip. Yeah. Uh huh. Because the old ones were complete death traps. That's what you, I'm you'd talking never about, drive yes. one of those. Uh-huh. Not in a million years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that's a big Kiano no from me, Mason. Mm, Kiano no also. Okay. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty in two thousand and three. The voice the video that. game. Yep. Okay. After that he did collateral. He played yeah. a, he's credited here as Airport Man, but we know the truth, Mason. He is also he's Frank Martin. He's Frank Martin delivering yeah. a briefcase to, to Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. Two little men trading secrets. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Little. What's in the briefcase? Probably a thimble. <laughs> a thimble full of secrets. <laughs> so here you go, Tommy boy. We're not we're not big men either. No, that's true. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But uh, it's a good movie. It's a great movie. It is. A I great mean, movie, it's, yeah. it's not his movie not at, at all. all. No. Uh, it's a big key ask, key yes from me though. But Agreed. we can't really get hung up on collateral. Mm, I don't know true. if I like that digital thing they were filming a bunch of stuff in back then. Yeah, right. Yeah, it crops up every once in a while now and it's very noticeable. Yeah. Oh, also we skipped the point where he becomes... Is it the Transporter movies where he becomes an unstoppable death machine I think, or is it yeah, later? Probably, yeah, probably, yeah. Or is this the transition? Well, they took out the... If they had to kept the missile in, yeah. it probably would have been that. And like, he's a good fighter, but he's also not... Like he's... he spends oh, a lot to mention that. The best part of the Transporter is the bike fight. Yes, that's uh-huh. a mate where he takes the pedals off a bike and then fights a guy shirtless in, in a covered in oil. Covered in oil. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. that and is just slipping great. and sliding. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. Like, I think in the transporter movies, he's crafty. Yeah, but there is a lot of there's a lot of that movie. It's him being pursued. Yes, it which is. I think is when when I think of Jason Statham, I'm like, 
he's pursued by no man. That's you know what true. I mean? Yeah. yeah. But, maybe, but maybe he should go back to being pursued a little bit. You know I what think I mean? so as well, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Like like recently when we saw The Rock in uh, Skyscraper. Yes. I thought it felt, I thought it was enjoyable that he wasn't just this man mountain. Yes. Like he, he's just a man and someone with skills could take him down. Yeah, that's a shit film though. Next up we've got <laughs> Cellular. <laughs> <laughs> cellular. Oh, he's the bad guy in Cellular. He is. That's right. So Chris the, Evans. Chris film? Evans is the good Kim guy. Kim Basinger. Yeah. Yes. He, he gets a phone call. He's just a fun party dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's going about his day. But Jason Statham's only bloody gone and kidnapped King ba- Kim Basinger. <laughs> King Basinger. King Basinger. <laughs> oh wow. And he has to bloody find her using cellular services. Cellular services. And he's, he's bloody bloody difficult job enough at the best of times. Am I right? You know it is. Yeah. It's a good movie from the one time we saw it at the theatres in 2004. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember. That was the year when we saw everything. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, I don't have much else to say. I don't really. I didn't know he was in that. I forgot he was in it. <laughs> okay. But he is. Well, let's call it a Keanu because. Oh come on! That's a good movie though. Yeah, but is I, it though? See, that's the thing. I, f- I feel we should be giving the Kia yes or the Kia no based on the Stathamosity. Oh yeah, okay, of the you. movie. Yeah, you're right. And if you can't remember that Statham was in it, yeah. Very low Stathamosity. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. I think we should rate these movies on Kia yes or Kia no yep. with a with a nod towards the Stathamosity okay. of these movies. Okay. Then a Kia okay. no. Yeah. I give it a big Kia yes for a Chris Evans Kim Absolutely. Basinger joint. That's very true. What their best probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, unless she's one of the crazy exes in uh, Scott Pilgrim, but I don't think I she is. I believe she is. No. Uh, after that, in 2000- I mean, they're all men, so. No, they're not. No, there's also... Yeah, no, there's one. There's one yeah. lady. Uh, in 2005, we got Frank Martin returned in The Transporter 2. Yep. I have no memory of this. <laughs> Which one's this? It's the one... Is it the one in the plane or is the one in the train where he crashes the plane or the train? It's... Three's the one Three's where he's tethered to his car. He's tethered to his car. That's right. And if he leaves the car, he'll explode. <laughs> That's three. <laughs> Let's look up. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Same director, I assume. Oh, I love the poster for this. He's doing like a double kick in the air holding two guns. Oh, so So good. good. And he's kicking himself, I think. He's kicking himself. I know, he's kicking that lady. Okay, two has the lady with the the heaps big guns. Okay. Yeah, nice. What's What's he moving in that film? Let's find out. It's a young boy who was kidnapped. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the first one is a girl... It was he's kidnapped. kidnapped. Yeah. What's yeah. the third one? He's just tethered to his he's car. He's tethered to his car, yeah. <laughs> Here's a quote. There's one quote on IMDb from uh, from Transporter 2. I haven't read it. Here we go. Gianni says, Not quite you expected when you, what you expected when you showed up for work this morning. Is it Frank? Frank Martin. Is that what passes for wit in this circle? Uh, Gianni, in this circle, my friend, wit is not a requirement of the job. <laughs> Brutality, yes. And ability to inflict pain, absolutely. What a quote. That well, is, well, it's good, too long. Pithy. It's not <laughs> yeah. iconic. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, that's true. It's not in the trailer, I would imagine. <laughs> no, it could be. Uh, nah, it's, that's a Keanu from me. Wow, well, okay, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of Stathamosity. Yeah, it's probably at 100%. It's, yeah, at least. <laughs> but it's, I can't, I can't endorse no, that movie. No, that's fair. Uh-huh. I don't remember it. After that was the movie London in 2005, where he played Bateman. No, no idea. idea. No nope. idea. Uh, we should look into it though. Tell tell us about the movie London. Okay, it's, it's Chris Evans again. What? <laughs> they Chris, clearly loved working with each other. Chris Evans, Jessica Biel, I, Isla Fisher, Louis C.K. What is Dane Cook? What is this movie? Cat Dennings, huh? Paula Patton, Sophie Monk. What Australia's is this? Australia's own Sophie Monk. Yeah. The winner, one of the winners of Australia's pop stars. Bardo. Bardo. Yeah. I don't know this movie at all. Are you sure it's not an advertisement for London? It's got 40% of Rotten Tomatoes. Upon the learning of his ex-lover, Jessica Biel is leaving New York. A man, Chris Evans, named Sid, crashes her going away party. But once there, he retreats to the bathroom where a stash of cocaine engages in a drug-fueled conversation with a man, Jason Statham, he hardly knows. Well, I think wh- he does know him because <laughs> the they while, were... Sid tries to find the courage to confront her ex-lover before it's too late wow yeah i don't know what that, that i don't know what to make of any of that apparently aren't you glad we looked it up though yeah very much so mm-hmm, yeah after that we've got revolver does jason say have a wig in that one 
He does. He's got long hair. Oh, terrific. He's out of control, this one. Wow, would you give that? Well, that's maximum statham that's maximum state. I've never seen Revolver. Actually, here's the thing, though. Is Jason Statham with hair... Is that yeah. more statomosity or less statomosity? Mm, good question. Because I think the increased testosterone that caused him to lose his hair is maximum statomosity. You know what, what I mean? Saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you enough. get it. The thing about Revolver as well, he's front and center in this uh, in all these posters. Mm-hmm. So he was riding high. Yes. Uh, do you know that? Do you know what this is about? Not really. No. Do you want me to tell you? Is it no? Is it some somebody has a pl- Does somebody have a perfect equation for committing crimes or something? No idea. Okay. Jake Green is a hotshot gambler, long nice. on audacity and short on common sense. All right. Jake served seven years in jail for a crime he didn't commit after taking the rap for me- for mean crime boss Dorothy. Why Macca. crime boss is so mean? I don't know. Upon his release, he takes on Macca in a private casino game, causes humiliation, and wins. When Macca puts out an order on Jake's life, Jake meets brothers. Avi and Zach who protect him and plot to take Macca down. Uh, Macca down. 16% Rotten Tomatoes, box office, $6 million. Okay. Oh boy, that's brutal. <laughs> uh, well, at least it only cost $500 to make. That's true. So and it was... And it was pure rele- profits. It was released in Russia as well. Ooh. An initial release in September. I remember being excited for this coming out. Oh, I'm yes. like, oh, it's a bloody... It's a Guy Ritchie one. It's a gangster, whatever, whatever. Uh-huh. But I still have yet to see it, and I'm not surprised. Yep. Also in 2005, he did four movies in 2005. Wow. Uh, this is Chaos. You familiar with that? No. It looks like it's got Ryan Felipe in it. Oh, they from... should have got Chris Evans. They should have. They should have completed the Statham Evans. It's got Wesley Snipes and Triptych. Ryan Felipe. Mm-hmm. So that, that's the... And it's got Crycheck from um, the, oh, X-Files. the X-Files. Great. So, yeah. Do you know what this is? No. Me neither. Let's just skip it. Okay. Next up. Yeah, we... no. Uh, he's in the Pink Panther in 2006. Huh. Um... As the Pink Panther? No, because that's the other guy. That's Steve oh. Martin. Um, mm. I haven't seen this, but big no. Big Keanu. <laughs> Absolutely. After that, we've got Crank. Yeah. yeah we got to talk about Crank. Uh, maximum statomosity. K- Kia, yes, to the maximum. So, do you want to explain Crank for us? So, in the first Crank. Yeah, Crank. Crank, number one. He's Chev Chelios. Yeah. And, wait. And he's... A gangster who's dying yes. needs a heart. Yes. But his heart's a battery. Yeah, so he so he no so he cuts out Jason Statham's heart. Yes. And replaces Jason Statham's heart with an artificial heart. Yes. That keeps him alive, but only when he keeps it charged with electricity. No. No, that's, that's the that's, second that's one. That's the second one. The first one, his heart has to stay above a certain... Level of beats per minute. Is oil. that right? Yeah, so he's doing all sorts Should of things. Should we look like, this up? He's doing a bunch of cocaine. I enjoy these movies. He's having sex in the street. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's doing all sorts of high-octane stuff to get his bloody heart racing. Mm-hmm. But he's running out of time. It's, no, it's a poison, right? It's a it's poison. It's a poison. Yeah. Yes, okay, so the first one, let's look it up. The first one's a poison, the second one's an artificial heart. I haven't heart. seen the second one. Okay, right. Yeah. Let's look it up. Okay. I know what happens at the end. So basically he gets revenge and then he falls out of a helicopter and he falls long enough to leave a very long and heartfelt uh, apology message uh, to, his to his girlfriend, Amy Smart. Yes. And then he hits the, he hits the car in the street. And it's, if, you, if you look at the poster... It looks like a, a quite it, like it looks like a it looks like the poster for Crash. Yeah, it looks like a solid, a solid, uh, dr- you know, serious dramatic movie. But it is not. No, it's fun though. Yeah. Uh huh. It's like well, it's the guys who did Spirit of Vengeance as well, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Okay, so first one, he's injected with a Chinese synthetic drug which inhibits the flow of adrenaline, slowing the heart and eventually killing the victim. Right. Etc. Keeps his adrenaline up through reckless and dangerous acts, picking fights, drugs, etc., etc. Uh, yeah, and then at the end, uh, he falls off the rooftop. Uh, he calls out a helicopter. Uh, he calls out a helicopter. Uh, and then at the end, he uh, calls the calls his girlfriend on the phone. He apologizes, and then he lands on a car. <laughs> yes, and he 
thumps off it. He bounces. It. He bounces off it, yeah. But then uh-huh. his eyes open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And we'll come back to part two. Okay, I'll, that's I'll, a, I'll that's have That's a ready. big key ah, yes from me. Absolutely. After that, we had, we've talked about this before briefly, In the Name of the King, a dungeon siege tale. Yes. He plays Farmer. It's an Uwe Boll film. I've seen five minutes of it, I think. And it's bad? Yes. Yeah. Do we need to talk about that? No. Minimum no. Stathamosity. Why period piece? <laughs> yeah. I mean, not really. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Next up, we've got War in 2007, another Jet Li collaboration. It says, War is the second of five collaborations between Jet Li and Jason Statham. Five? Expendables. Oh, yeah, good point. They did too many Do you think he's better friends with Chris Evans or Jet Li? Hmm. He's not making movies with Chris Evans anymore, is he? That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't don't know anything about War. It's probably like the concept or the movie. What would you say it's good for? I don't know. Solving disputes. You don't know anything about war. <laughs> so, uh, but it looks it looks maximum state and these big faces on the poster. Yes, he's facing off against Jet Li, but Jet Li's got sunglasses on. I don't know what to make of this. Uh, so it's just a big yes for me for that one. Wow. Okay, so after this, we've got the bank job. Yep, which is. It's a it's a real film in terms of it's, yeah, it it's is, way right? more it's, it's not but it's way more realistic. It's set in the seventies. Yeah, he's just a guy who's trying to get some money to to get, get his bloody life back. Yeah, on it's track. kind of a throw. It's kind of a throwback yeah. to Lockstock. It's great. He's not he's not charging through walls. No. He's not flipping motorcycles. That's right. He's not breaking people's neck in midair. He's not doing helicopter any of those fall. Things. Yeah, but I think from memory, I really enjoyed the bank job. It's good. It's a good it's a movie. It's a British. Crime thriller. Yeah. Uh, the, the stakes are high. The statemosity is low. Yes, mm-hmm. but I'd say for the best. Agreed. It's got a bunch of other people you might recognise, such as the guy who was shot by Cassie and Andor in the alley in Rogue One. And I know you're a big fan of Pretty that. Pretty great. Is yeah. Chiwetel Ejiofor in it? I don't see his name Never yet. mind then. It's not to say that he isn't, Mason, mm-hmm. but he isn't. Oh. Yeah. Ma- minimum... St- not, not, I wouldn't say minimum statemosity, uh-huh. yeah, but yeah. I'm still going to give it a big... The minimum, I think it's the minimum statemosity. Like if you put a lot of filters, if you put a lot of state, like a statemosity filter on a film yeah. to try and minimize the statemosity, there's still going to be a lot of statemosity bleed through. You know, you what better I mean? believe there would yeah, be. But I would. So it's the minimum. It's more early days. State. It's more minimum. It's it's minimum safe distance yeah. statemosity. But a big key R yes for me. I think after that in 2008. I remember really enjoying this movie, and I've seen it since, and I still really enjoyed it. Death Race. Yes, right. Uh-huh. It's a remake of the 1970s movie, but Death it's Race 2000. Very much yes. Not much, not much in common with it. He goes into prison because they think he murdered his wife, but they only want him in prison so he can compete in a death race. Mm. He didn't really murder his wife. No. How many chin ups is he doing in there? Heaps. As many as he can. Yes. He has to. He has to be. He's the new Frankenstein, a guy who wears a metal mask and race around the track. Uh, he's a really good car racer. All he has to do is win four death races or something, and then he gets out of the death race. Oh, that seems easy. And he does. Oh. He gets out of the death race. That's pretty great. And good then for him. It's a good movie. Is it, though? I really like it. Is <laughs> it a good movie? It's probably not. I think it's, the, I think it's the guy who makes the Resident Evil movies. Doesn't seem like there was much of a... Didn't seem like a lot of drama, the way you described it. No, it's a lot of drama. Okay, because it seems Ian like... Ian McShane's said, in it. Tyrese Gibson's in it. He just said it. he has to win four death races yeah. to escape. Jason Clarke's in it. Then he just gets out? Yeah, he gets out or whatever. Jason huh. Clarke's in it. The Terminator. Oh. Man, good cast. Joan Alley. These are all good names. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's Paul W.S. Anderson. So there you go. Great. Big fan. A big big thumbs up. A big yeah, yes. Terrific. To Death Race 2008. Okay, but how much statemosity? It's maximum. Yeah. He's in a car and everything. <laughs> it's true. Don't you remember? Yeah, no, I get it. Did, yeah. you, did you like it? I can't remember if I've seen it or not. You've seen it. We well, saw I? it. To, oh, there, look, if, if I've seen it in 2008, oh, then and I the movie said, it, yeah. you've seen it. Okay, that's probably true. Okay, well, I'm going to say Kia no, just because I can't remember. What? Else. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, next one's Transporter 3. He's tethered to his car. It's not yep. good. It's got the guy from um, Prison Break because it's 2008. So yeah, that's right. So you get... Wait, uh, which one? The, the, the chunky one? No, no, the villain. <laughs> not, not the, okay. Not, not the one of the brothers. One. No, it's the, the villain. The, okay. The guy who's like a weird... Okay, well, don't, creep. don't throw that at me. If you, <laughs> Just be specific. Just say it's not the wide brother or the thin brother. <laughs> It's not wide Just boy or clarify, thin boy. You don't mean obese. You mean physically He's wide. He's physically very wide, yes. <laughs> 
Transformer 3 is crap. Yeah, it's no good. Uh, next up, we've got Crank High Voltage in 2009. Yeah. Now, you've already explained the plot inadvertently, but what it, what what's that one about? That one is the same. Yeah. Hang on, I'm just going to... Shift? What a shift. That dog's encroaching on so much space, Mason. No. Get out of here, dog. You're so weird. Hello, dog. No, I can't stay mad at you, dog. How could you? I can get even more mad at you, dog. Oh, no. That's right. So yeah, they took his heart because it's an yeah, indestructible so it's, heart. So it's right? exactly so it's it starts immediately after the end of the first one. Yep. Uh, he they scoop his body up off the street. <laughs> uh, they cut out his heart, uh, and then they put an artificial heart in him. And apparently they need his heart because he's so they've they've realised that he's more or less indestructible. It's got the best heart in the universe. With the heart. Yeah. It's described as an indestructible heart, I believe, in the... in the. Is he carrying a car battery? No, you think of Iron Man, I think. I am, yeah. Yeah. But he does put a battery on his tongue his at tongue, one point, I think. Yeah. Think. Well, it's in uh-huh. the poster, so I'd yeah. hope he bloody does that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, would you give it a big Kia, yes? Yes, I would. Okay, fair These enough. These movies are so stupid, but they're very enjoyable. Do you think they'll ever do another one of those? Uh, I can't remember what happens at the end. Hang on, let's have a look. His bones would be liquid. Yeah, at the end he bursts into flames <laughs> and he continues fighting. Classic stage. But at the end, uh, he gets his heart put back in and he wakes up again. So there could be three. Does. But is he too old for... Because th- they're so... Like, they're very B-movie kind of... Maybe we're past that. Maybe he's past I it. I think he is probably past that. He doesn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. If uh, you could be in a Fast and Furious movie, why would you be in a Crank movie? You wouldn't do it. He feel It feels like he isn't the kind of guy who... Laughs at a funeral. Yeah, exactly. Um, don't understand what we mean, you soon will. Yeah. Uh, ben Naked Ladies. Uh, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would follow fan expectations yeah, of right. him. Like, if, there were, if the fans were clamoring, like, if they were like, do Crank 3, we've got a million signatures, I think he'd be like, nah, I'll don't do want it. to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's going to climb back inside Vinnie Jones. <laughs> that's right. Sleep here. Yeah, that's right. After that's the movie 13. Don't know what this is. <laughs> a young man assumes a dead man's identity and finds himself embroiled in an underground world of power, violence, and a chance. Oh. A chance where men gamble behind closed doors and live the lives of other men. Ooh. Uh, he's not top billing, I don't believe. Is he top billing? Uh, it looks more of a Mickey Rock film. Oh, okay. Don't know about this one. But a big old Kia yes for me. Terrific. Next up is Expendables. I dab- I actually realised I had seen part of this and I fell asleep watching right, a terrific. friend's house. Good it's sign. Ter- it's a terrible film. Yeah, they're no good. Yeah, they're all no good. Uh, I haven't really seen it though, but no good. Minimum then, Statham also, Minimum right? Statham, probably. Well, he's in a crew of various Expendables. That's very true. His name's Lee Christmas in those movies. Did you know <laughs> yeah. that? All right. Well, I think that should bring up the Stathamosity by, by yeah, a notch. Yeah, a fraction. Yeah, we should have rated all the names as well. They're not that interesting. No. Just Lee Christmas Lee is Christmas good is one. good. And Frank, what's his face? That's I love not these bad. names. Brant, Danny, Lee Christmas. <laughs> uh, next is The Mechanic in 2011, which I've got seen a that sequel. One. That's yeah. good, isn't it? It's Mechanic? not bad, yeah. yeah. He's, like a, um, he's like an assassin, but he comes up with clever... Assassiny ways. Like that episode of Mission Impossible we watched. Yes, precisely. Yeah, cool. Ben Foster's in it. Is he? I think. Oh, he's his apprentice or apprentice, something? Apprentice, yeah, apprentice. But mechanic. he goes rogue? Yeah. Why is he called a mechanic? Fixes cars on the side. Is it a code name or is he literally a mechanic? I can't remember. What a movie, though. <laughs> right? Is that a big KIS from you? It's a big KIS from me. I like it. He's in Nomeo and Juliet. Who cares? Call me when he's in the sequel. Uh, <laughs> next, we've got the movie Blitz. Seems like a threat. In 2011. Okay. Uh, he played the character Brant, Dunno. He's then no Lee Christmas, is he? He's certainly not. And then in 2011, he's in Killer Elite, where he plays Danny, Dunno. <laughs> Pacino's also in that movie, I think. Okay, and then after that, in 2012, it's the movie Safe. Uh, don't know what that is. A young girl's memory holds a priceless numerical code, finds herself pursued by triads, the Russian mob and cops, blah, 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 ex-cage fighter, etc. Who cares? And then we've got Expendables <laughs> 2, where he returns as Lee Christmas. Garbage. Uh, but after that, we've got Parker. Yeah, right. What's the deal with the Parker character, Mason? Well, Parker's the character played... He's he's a... He's Payback Boy. Yeah, he's the, he's the same character as uh, played by Mel Gibson in the movie Payback. Mm. There's a series of novels by Richard Stark, I think, isn't it? And it's, he's like a, like a low-life scumbag uh, a criminal. Great. But, yeah. a, I liked uh, the Mel Gibson one. Is it as good as that one? Parker. Yeah. I've not seen it. There you go. <laughs> yep. 
You seen Redemption in 2013? No. You seen Fast and Furious 6? Yes. He plays Deckard Shaw, but he's uncredited because it's probably at the end where he's like, now it's my turn. Yeah. I'm Jason Statham. Mm-hmm. Uh, Homefront, I'm just burning through these now. Homefront 2013, uh, he defriends his family from Rednecks or something probably. That's what it looks like on the poster. Mm-hmm. The Expendables 3, bad. Wild Card 2015, he plays Nick Wilde. No. But then... <laughs> He plays a really great role in Spy in 2015. <laughs> yes, he does. Bless you. Well, <coughs> one more time. There we go. He's very Wait, funny. More. Yes, he is, isn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great role for he's him. He's just... He's, he's a real highlight of that Absolute movie. 150% Statham Aussie. Yes. And he's just... Insane. He's insane. <laughs> and the, char- the premise of the character seems to be that he is just... He's a guy who clearly is telling outrageous lies about yeah. his adventures except they're all probably true because he's <laughs> severely out of his head and would probably do all that stuff that's it and after that we've got Furious 7 uh-huh. which is a big key yes from me also yep absolutely uh, he's a great villain in that uh-huh. that's the final Paul Walker one as well and you think he's in you think he's gonna not return uh-huh. or something but he does then there's the mechanic resurrection in 2016 which is, which is apparently great I've heard Says that multiple whom? times. It opens with a guy. He's in a rooftop pool on like the side of a um a building with uh-huh. a glass floor, and he blows the bottom out of it, and the guy falls to his death. Like that's one of the assassination things that happened in that. I movie. mean, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool, but it's not like I meant to watch it before this episode. I uh-huh. was hoping to squeeze it in, but I didn't get time. That's not like well, I'm completely safe up here in this glass pool. Mm. On, a, on a skyscraper You know what I mean? I thought he was Why would you <laughs> get in the pool If you didn't think You were completely Good safe? point Good point And last off We got The Fate and the Furious And he is probably The best part of that movie also Yes He's, he's got like the best the action Incredible scene. sequence On the plane yeah. Where he has to rescue The baby by put, and, and he puts adorable Little baby yep. earmuffs on it And he's a good guy now Yeah They should have given him Charlie's Theron's Weird dreads Or whatever was going on there Didn't they? Oh yeah Shouldn't That's they? right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway What a stellar career For real I'm not yeah. being ironic I think he's done Some great stuff Same Game. I like that he's he's kind. Of, I would say he's kind of the modern Bruce Willis in a way, kind yeah. of every manish. Every manish sort of done great same. stuff for bald people. Yeah. What's what would you say is his best film though? If you had to pick one, I'd say The Mechanic too. Apparently, it's really good. You don't know that for <laughs> sure. I'm uh, gonna say The Bank Job and Death Race because I feel like they're two sides. <laughs> they state really and, are. They show his range, don't yeah, they? But you can probably throw a, a crank in there. Yeah, I was instead, gonna say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I reckon probably Crank. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. And uh-huh. Crank 2? Yeah, I'm, I'm packaging them together. Crank and Crank 2. Those are your two favourites. As much as I... I do enjoy Snatch a lot. Yep. Uh, and I do... You like Transporter? Transporter's great, but I'm not sure if it still holds up. Yeah, right. Quite. It should, but look, at the time it was so much fun. Yes. But I think with with this kind of action movie... The once you've seen those stunts a million times, yeah, in in in, in succeeding movies and and done better and done better and like you know rip offs and stuff like that, they they get a bit. What do you even do, Mason? Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's not his fault, is it? It's hardly his fault. It's not our fault, though. No, it's not our fault. <laughs> I'm just to be clear. I'm absolving both of us of all the blame. For some of Jason Statham's movies not holding up. Good stuff. It's never our fault. All right, you know what it's time for now then? Ooh, what we read and what we're going to read? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> what are you reading? Well, I've just put Parker on my list. Get into it. Of, uh, on Netflix. Well, so I'm going to do probably Mechanic watch too. That. Is that also on Netflix? I'm going to look it up. I'll look it up now. Please do. Okay, here we go. While you're talking about that, I'm going to dip into the the resurrection of Wolverine. He's coming back. And do you know what his new power is? What's that? He's got hot claws. Oh, I saw that. Right. Is that how he's... Because the Wolverine... The last I heard of Wolverine in the comic book Marvel Universe, he was trapped in some sort of adamantium statue. Correct. Is that how he got out of it? With hot claws? Well, maybe there was some kind of evolution for Mm -hmm. him to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, potentially... Okay. But even though there's multiple versions of him running around in the universe. Oh, because the old man Logan. old man and you... there's X-23 yeah. and yeah, right. whatever. But um, I'm interested to see how he comes back. So I'm going to be reading Wolverine Hot Claws <laughs> when it hits shelves. Wolverine Hot Claws. Ooh, so hot. <laughs> Too hot. That's the slogan. <laughs> so, claws so hot. Hey, did you see the gameplay footage for Doom? What's the new one called? Uh, Yeah, 2. Whatever Doom, it is. Doom Eternal. Yeah. Yeah. Looks it, great. Does have look you great. seen it? Yeah, I have seen it, yeah. This might be the... You're getting get, back into it. This might be the game that gets me to finally buy a PS4 
a couple of months before it becomes obsolete. Absolutely. You know? Or you could get it on the Switch, which I'm going to be doing. I think I know. I wanted a... It's definitely a graphical downgrade, but I want it on the go. Yeah, because see, now that I've finally got a big TV, I'm like, mm. well, I should probably utilize that. And I just watch, I just watch some HD footage on YouTube, and I'm like, that is. You watched amazing. the trailer for Parker, didn't you? Yeah. 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 And was it good? Yeah, it's great. Are you reading anything else? Uh, I rewatched some of Minority Report, and the special effects do not hold up. Wow, it looks so bad. More like Minority Retort. Your movie's bad. There it is. <laughs> There's that Minority Retort. <laughs> got him. Uh, you got him. Yeah, I remember it, really liking that. Does it hold up other than that? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the the, the it was the, a very white washed out film. Wasn't yeah. It? Mm. I think the drama of it absolutely holds up. Yeah, but. The CGI and the green screen is woeful. There's what about the bit where he's in the car and the car's getting built around him and you think he's trapped, but then so he, drives, bad. he drives away. So bad. What and there's a bit set on the freeway where yeah, he's yeah. leaping from car to car. It's so terrible. Jetpacks? And there's a bit, the jetpacks look terrible. What about the machine that carves a wood ball that tells you you're a murderer? Looked bad. What about the glove that, that does holograms and you can see the future? Very bad. But your next question is, what about the cops? They have that nightstick, and Six if you sticks. slap somebody with it, they vomit. That still holds up. That's still great. The six stick. The six stick. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, you know, there was a series that there was, was a one, there was a one season. We yeah. talked about it when our buddy Charlie Clawson was on. Oh yeah. We talked yeah. about uh, the Minority Report TV series, which is set many years after. Yes. With the one, m- of the, movie. one of the one of one of the precogs, pre-cogs. Is, is attempting to have a normal life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why would you though? You wouldn't, yeah. Yeah. You'd write a book. You'd uh, appear on like Celebrity Big Brother. It's me, the precog guy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm gonna win. Voted out. Yep. Well, first round. You know what it's time for now, then? No, I don't. I don't. What? what hang on, bloody. All right, hang on. Do you or do you not know? No, I know it's time for letters, but I don't have the thing queued up. Okay. Just hold your bloody horses, all right? You gotta queue it up, Mason. I'm working on it. You're... I got so excited thinking about the the precog being on Celebrity Big Brother. That's true. Would it, it was... be better on Celebrity Big Brother or, or like Survivor? I don't think they're Master survivors. Master Chef. I don't think they're survivors. Yeah, that's a good point. You think they've cooked anything? I don't think so. Yeah, I've cooked up all this goop that I <laughs> no live one wants in. That. No one wants that. The classic one was letters, oh letters. We love you. Some letters, they're only a day. Right now, we're going to do that. Great stuff, Mason. Thank you. Just joking. You nailed, suck at nailed, that. Nailed it every time. Metal Eugenio's written in. If you want to reach Ooh. the show, actually, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or shoot a Gmail over to uh, Weekly, Weekly Planet, Planet Pod at gmail.com. I nearly said Mr. Mason, but that's not it, is it? <laughs> no. Do you want me to go first or do you want to go? No, you f- can go first. Okay, Metal Eugenio, written in before, says... Uh, is movies slash TV reboots just an American thing or does Australia also like rebooting stuff too these days? Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I'm trying to think of a... Either things are on for 40 years yes. or they're on and then they cancel them forever. Except for Hey Hey It's Saturday. Yeah, right. Which came back and then was racist and then yeah. was cancelled again. Yeah. Mm. I'm trying to think of a rebooted thing. There was Boney, which was a detective show about an indigenous detective. I don't know what that is. Okay, never mind. What about the series Bullworth? But they just brought back original Bullworth, didn't they? <laughs> Did they? <laughs> Well, why would you bring back? Why would you bring back a new Bullworth? Uh, we don't I'm, really. Re- I don't think there's a lot of fondly remembered stuff here, though. No, Prisoner. Yeah, they remake? might have done that. Yeah. I feel like they bring back. They'll cancel a like sale of the century, and they re- they'll retool it. Yeah, rem- it's mostly which game is a, shows. Which is game shows, which isn't very interesting. No, I mean, when have they, they haven't brought back Police Rescue? They Water rats, they haven't brought that back. They haven't brought that back. All together now, they, they haven't, haven't brought, brought that back. back <laughs> hey, Dad, they haven't brought that back. Well, they can't because the Dad was a sex pest yeah. and he's in jail now. Yeah, he's a pedophile. Yeah. yeah. Uh, haven't brought back Acropolis now. They're all alive too. Yeah. They're all doing shows at the comedy festival where they go off stage and come back dressed as their nonna. Yeah. That's what all those guys do. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't. look, I think it's inevitable. Oh, is it though? I don't know. I guess we don't have a culture of that. Not somehow. really. Look, they Which don't... is weird because it's it's easier than coming up with a new but thing. But also, isn't it? it's the same cop show anyway. It doesn't That's matter. True, yeah, uh huh. It's either police squad or police time or <laughs> police John and yeah. or detective 
fucking grim face or whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah, it is. It's whatever, and, he, yeah. and he's on the force, but he's not yeah. happy about it. And... Man, I miss police time. <laughs> Because you always knew when you heard the theme song and it was like, police time, it's police time, you know? And you knew. But you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Talking it's, about, the, yeah. it's the same shit, yeah, you know what it. I mean? Mm-hmm. Roger Corsner's in half of them, good on him, mm-hmm. he does good work. Uh, anything else? I don't know, but I also think like maybe that most of our dramas and uh, you know action shows and stuff like that were just imported from America and yes. the UK and, and that sort of thing. So that's where the reboots come from. Yeah. Like, I can't, like, proper dramas, like I'm, I tried to think, like maybe Rake with, um, yeah, with his like face Rake. in it. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, that'll probably get rebooted in 20 years. But Yeah, yeah. will it though? Maybe. No, I just typed in Australian TV show reboot and there's nothing. It just yeah. says 10 Aussie shows that deserve a reboot. Uh-huh. Give us some, some examples. I can bring that is up. Is one of them a Acropolis now? Is one of them a country practice? <laughs> I bet it is. Mm-hmm. All right, over we go. Nobody cares about this. Oh, I care. <laughs> I care, and therefore the listener will care. All right, then. This is taking forever, Mason. Mm-hmm. Why is it taking so long? It's been over your video. All Saints. No. No. Which Blue is Healer. hospital drama. Yeah. Blue, Blue Healers. Suburban I can see that coming back. Drama. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Clawson was in that. Oh. Yeah. Frontline. They should bring back Frontline. Nah, they shouldn't. It doesn't really work now. <laughs> no. Frontline's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, McLeod's Daughters, another one with Charlie Clawson. Oh, he's been They've talked about he? on Tofop about how to bring that back. Wow. Yeah, because he plays like the son of like a Kerry Packer type. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And he comes to the country to be a McLeod's daughter. <laughs> uh, so he's been in at least two of these ten. Yes, if not more. Because I'm more. sure he's, he would have been in more. Yeah. Uh, Pack to the Rafters. Didn't that just finish? Nah, it's due for a reboot, okay. though. Uh, Rush, that's a Roger Corsner one. That's got... Corsner, um, sorry. Does that have... Um, um, what's his face in it? Samuel Johnson? No. Yes, it does. Drazic. Yes, yes, it's got Drazic. Yeah. What's his name? Callum Mulvey. Callum Mulvey, the yeah. patron saint of this podcast. Oh, do you remember Sea Patrol? No. Oh, Is that man. on there? Yeah. Yeah, that's due for a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> the show called Sea Patrol. Lisa McCune was in it. That's why they're saying Oh, it. nice. Okay. Oh, Summer Heights High. You're a big fan of that. Disagree. I hate it. <laughs> and <laughs> I love how much you hate that show. Yeah. It's so outside of what everybody else says about it. Mm-hmm. And I love it. And the last one is The Secret Life of Us, which it's got a lot of familiar faces. Uh, in particular, Claudia Carvin and... Samuel Johnson. Sa- yes, but also Joel Edgerton, oh. who's now killing it in Hollywood. He's in Bright. He's in Bright, but he's also... But he's, in better He's things. directing and yeah, mm-hmm. he's doing a bunch of great stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so um, wow. some of those could come back. Mm-hmm. But why? Good like a lot question, of those, yeah. I think there's. I think Blue Healers they could definitely bring back. Okay. Because Gritty I think reboot. You could bring back John Woods and... Gritty Reboot. Gritty Reboot and a bunch yeah. of others, but... Oh, yeah, and he has to... He it it's they go and he's in like he's he's in the city now. Yes. And he lives in an apartment and he's just haunted by all the stuff that happened when he when he was blue worked Hillary. in Mount Pleasant or whatever that place is called. <laughs> sure. You got a letter there? Okay, this is a letter from Dylan Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, By just... the way, nobody's listening now because every... <laughs> <laughs> now everybody's glued to it. They want to know about Australian drama. No, they don't. Uh, this is from Dylan Hall. He recently went on a fifty-mile backpacking trip through the Wind Rivers. Uh, through some of the long days of hiking, he had our podcast to listen to. Cool. So thanks. Uh, he, says he wants to thank us for getting through some of the steep uphill parts of the trip. The question he'd like to ask is, what is your favourite survival movie? Mine's The Martian. Nah, Martian's all right. Yeah, it's good, right? It's okay. It's good. It's not great. Survival movies. Yeah. Have hey, a think. Have you ever been a fan of Castaway? Not really, no. Me neither. Yeah. I like it, but I don't love it. You don't love it. it. Don't like it. gravity. Yeah. Don't like Into the Wild because it's a guy being a dickhead. Yep. 127 hours? How do you feel about that one? It's okay. Franco. I like it's, it. Franco I like it. his, it's Franco cutting his own arm off. Uh, like that. I like the grey a lot. Oh, The Road. It's The Road. Okay, yeah. It's cool. The Road. The Road's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's an amazing book. It's an amazing movie. Uh-huh. All is Lost is on here as well. It's a uh, Robert Redford one, which is good. Mad Max. Does that really count? No. I guess so. No, I disagree. Children of Men is not a survival film. That's what I thought. Never seen Apocalypto. Have you seen that? No, never. Yeah. Anyway, I'm still going with The Martian. Yeah, cool. That's a good Because it's fun. It's fun and positive. I got 28 Days Later on here as well, though. Yes. What do you think of that, Mason? Don't mind that. Don't mind that at all. Predator. There's some good ones on here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Anyway, do you want me to do another one and then do we'll another letter and I'll do one more letter. It's from Fallen Night Animations. Do you think that Harry the Harry Potter movies are the best possible version? Not me. Four to six have a lot of lot cut out. Pensive Memories, Crustaceous Curse, Cruciatus Curse, <laughs> the Crustacean Curse. curse. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but leave in the Ron, leave the Ron feud in. Love the show. I think there's definitely room to make that into a series, but they won't because the movies are in the continuity of. The new current movies are in the continuity of the movies, right. old movies. But yeah, I think they've... they've okay, well, I've never read the books, so I could not say. Yeah, there's more stuff uh, in the books. But again, having watched some of these quite recently, they do seem to be improving. Mm. Uh, do you think they... Uh, here's the thing. Do you, would, do you think they should... If they could, do you think they should remake the first couple so they're more in line with the later ones? Nah. Stephen because they're stylist. for kids, the first ones. I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. then they're okay. So, is the idea be, so do you feel the, the ideal way to watch these the Harry Potter movies is start when you're a kid and sort of grow up with the with yes. with the with the characters. Yep. Okay, right. Okay, great. Yep. Great stuff. Because if you watch them all as a kid, yeah. you'd kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. They get real grim. Yeah, they sure do. Uh what do you got, Mason? Okay, this is my last letter. It's from Mitchell. Yes. Uh, he has a Batman related question. Do you think that Batman keeps snacks in his utility belt? I think he keeps like uh like hydrolite and Oh yeah, uh-huh. stuff like that. Do you think he does? No, I think maybe he keeps him in the Batmobile. Okay, I think he might have some stuff. Like what? It's a good question. Raisins. I, what says here? He says, does he have a protein bar or a handful of almonds stashed away? I don't think he would, because he'd have to keep replacing that. Yeah. Or Alfred would. Yes. And Alfred, would, I think he maybe maybe he has like the solid equivalent of like Soylent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like Something it's like it, ne- it, it like it's just it just tastes like cardboard. But it never rots away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can. I can understand. It just, that. He's got a little mini. It's in fridge. a little army package. Yeah, in, in a little fridge thing. in the Batmobile, freeze dried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, he yeah. never, and he never has to. And it doesn't. It does, there's no crumbs. Yep. It just comes away in in chunks. Yes. It's horrendous. It's like an LCM, but it's yeah. bad. But it doesn't weigh you down because he's got to do a lot of jumping. Yeah. Right. And he, he probably, and he. He wouldn't, wouldn't He'd have want to, to eat a lot of food, right? But he though. also couldn't be too heavy in his tum because he didn't yeah. want to get a stitch when you're running. Well, now I work out on an empty stomach. It's way easier. Mm, so do you think he fights crime on an empty stomach? He might, he might, yeah. 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 You wouldn't mm. have a big bowl of pasta and then ju- <laughs> yeah, and absolutely then leap not. from a from no. building. To building. No. You'd vomit. <laughs> yeah, he would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't want to get drive through on like that ad. No, you certainly wouldn't. He wouldn't mm. eat a burger. He absolutely not. It'd kill him. <laughs> it probably would. He's got no body fat and no defenses. That's it. So do you think he's... He must be eating a lot. He must eat like a bodybuilder though. Yeah. Mm. You'd have to, right? Yeah, right. Just like chicken and broccoli. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good on him. Yeah, I think so too. Mm. So utility belt full of chicken and broccoli. That's yes. where we go with this. Steamed chicken and broccoli. Uh-huh. But Alfred would replace that every day. That's what if I'm saying. If he did yeah. have it, he would. He, yeah. He wouldn't do it himself. Mm. But I no, think but you're right. I think, I think he would initially. Yeah. But then he'd be like... You don't even eat this. You don't eat this. Why <laughs> do I keep replacing it? And then he would come up with a crafty plan. Yeah. Of killing Batman. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. That's the show for this week, yeah, though. Yeah, it is. Do you want to ring us home, Mason? I'll bring us home and ring us home. All right. uh, let's see. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp, which was where we keep our or our, all our audio commentaries. That's right. You can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group where we, we're always hanging about. You can hang about too. You can uh, chat about all the stuff we talk about and more. Related to the podcast, unrelated to the podcast, related to all the podcasts on the Planet it's Broadcasting. It's all happening. Network, it's all happening there. Yeah. You can also go to uh, planetbroadcasting.com. You can sign up for our newsletter, mm. which is created by the great uh, Robert Collings. He does great work. Mm-hmm. We're, we're bringing him on board to do more, more and more work as well. He's yeah. bloody, he's a, he's a great asset. He's a real and gun a, and a good dude. Uh, you can also find him at Raw Collings on Twitter and at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. Yes. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a buck. Yes. Uh, You can also go to the Amazon affiliate link or in our episode description. If you want to buy every Jason Statham movie in some sort of box set, click through and do it in our... uh, There's no Jason Statham box set. There's those split DVD packs. Yeah, right. I'm going to look that up. Where you get the bank job and you get... What was the the other one you liked? Death Race. Death Race. I nearly said Car Race. Car Race. Car Race. (laughs) Get, buy yourself a death race slash the bank job box set through our Amazon affiliate link. We can oh, kick back. A Jason Bestatham. Mm. I knew it. Is it shaped like it's his too head? Generic. Is it shaped like <laughs> is it shaped like Vinnie <laughs> Jones? <laughs> and you crack it open and it's filled with Jason Statham DVDs? Oh, that'd be so good. 
It, it looks so generic. You can't, I can't even tell what movie is from oh, on the cover. I bet none of them are like Fast and Furious. Well, I bet don't it's... buy that one. Buy the one, buy the DVDs individually. Yeah. That's I mean, it. do what you like. Live do your what life. You like, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Yes, yes. We have t-shirts on tpublic.com. Just search for the Weekly Planet. Yes. What else do I say here? Uh, Instagram, did you say that one? Oh yeah, I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and you can also click over there and my Instagram's on there linked as well. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter and Mr. Sunday Graham on Ooh, Twitter Graham very, on Instagram. Very good. Yeah. Um, thank you everybody for listening to the show. Yes. That is the number one thing that I should say first. And we also, uh, we love it when people recommend it to other people as well. It really helps us ah, out. Ah, so good. It's the, probably the best way to get the word out, isn't it? Yeah. Like even if you're recommending it online, if you're like to a friend, you put it on their Facebook and you're like, do you Listen like to this. This weird crap or, or I'm thing unfriending like? you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, next week we'll do the Meg and maybe Talk about something, the Meg, else. something else. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Maybe we we'll watch another Statham movie, like one we've oh, never we watched before. Yeah. Maybe we we'll watch London. London. Whatever London is. I'll watch the mechanic too. You watch London. Okay. All right. See you next week, guys. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. Have a fun time. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.